Hey guys, how are you? Happy Wednesday. It's Members and Mods, guys. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Happy lunchtime. Um, if you are not a member, you might be getting gifted as we speak. Um, Peacock, v uh, Valida, Evelyn H., Marcy Smith, Relly, Tracy, Forget Me Nots, Shante, Rudy B. Um, is that 10? Did I do 10? I think I did 10. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. And then I guess there should be two more, but we'll see how it turns out. Um, so welcome, welcome, welcome. If you were not a member, we have 10 new members as of right now. So you should be able to chat if you weren't able to chat before. Um, welcome, welcome, welcome. Um so thank you, um, all of you guys who are here. Um, what is going on, guys? Yeah, today's Wednesday. Today's members. Today's mods. So welcome, 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 welcome. Um, if you just got gifted, say hi. Say hi. Um, come to the chat um, and let us know who you are. Um, how's everybody doing? Okay, a couple things. Um, so we did... Um, so I have to finish up the Diddy lawsuit today. Oh my God. It's like still like 30 more pages, but we're, we'll get through it. So we're going to try to get that done today or tomorrow at the latest. Also, I do have a short document. I did get the Portia and Simon divorce. So I did get that. That, thank God, is only five pages. And really it's three pages. Um, it's kind of interesting. So I got that and I did get the bond, the order for bond for Nesto's latest bond. Okay. I do have that. So I got that yesterday. I guess I got it while I was live yesterday. So if you guys wanted to know, well, we don't know if it's cash. We don't know if he's going to get the 10% program. We don't know. 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 Um, we know. Okay. Um, let me do this though. Let me do redact something from it. Some of the names we know, and then some of the names were not putting out. Um, Okay, let me. All right, let me do, do. Let me do this. Okay, but I'll show it to you guys. Let me just uh, do a little bit of a little bit of. Let me take that name off for the sexual assault victim. I mean, I don't know what everyone else has gone. I mean, we know some of what some of the other folks have gone through um, just by virtue of having to deal with this guy. But as far as the actual crime that has taken place, um, let's just say the victim in the arrest warrant, um, I've taken their... I've redacted their name. Um, and then the funny thing is, in this particular document, the uh, I'll show you guys in a little bit. Just give me just a second. Um, <clears throat> okay. Is it set now? All right. Copy. All right. So how's everybody doing? Um, I am going to drop the phone line. So if anybody is available, you're not late, sis. We literally just getting started. So welcome, welcome, welcome. Today is Wednesday, guys. It's members and mods. Um, if you guys want to call in, there's been so much stuff to happen. We listened um, to the Diddy lawsuit yesterday, a good half of it. That was crazy. Um, I'm just still like Cuba Gooding Jr. W Sir, what is, what are you up to? Like Cuba Gooding Jr. Why, why, what is going on here? Okay. Um, it was the, 
um, young Miami's cousin. It was, it was the R and B singer this and an R and B singer that and a rapper from here and a rapper from there. It was, it was just, it was just too much. <laughs> so I don't know what you guys think. I'm sure you guys are thinking the same thing. Like real, this is crazy. These, these folks are doing the absolute most. Um, all right, let me see if I can pull this. I have to, it's like I have to do edit in one place and then flip it to another. Okay. Um, copy. I thought I was ready when I came live, but. And then if I don't set it for a specific time, it's, it's, uh, Okay, here we go. Okay, good. Okay. All right, so I've got that. Um, okay. So let's see. All right, it's lunchtime, everybody. Welcome, welcome, welcome. I'm glad everybody is here. Um, okay, so we're going to get into a couple of things. Um, so the first order of business, I like I said, I have the... Um, and you guys may have already heard the divorce document from Portia and Simon. You guys may or may not be interested in that. I don't know. So you guys tell me if there's anything specific that you guys want to talk about. Um, let me pin this. Okay, so I've got the call in right here. Anybody getting ready to go on break or lunch? Hit me up, okay? Um, let's look at this real quick because I know this was a topic of conversation. So let's go ahead and just address this elephant in the room and we can talk about it and then move on, move this one over to the side. Um, let's see. Uh, can I do full screen? Give me just a second. Uh, anyway, okay, here we go. Okay. Hold on, guys. Okay. All right, so this is the latest um, bonding sheet, right? So this is um, as it relates to Ernest Williams and... Um, he has a order for bond and it is as follows. So this was filed on 2-23-24 and it's on case 23CP219961 and it's for the um, these five counts, which you can clearly see here, um, aggravated battery, right? Um, number two, count two, grape, aggravated back door, um, another battery charge, it's a misdemeanor, and trafficking, and trafficking. We're going to just kind of leave it. You guys can read. Um, so we have count one, a hundred thousand, count two, a hundred thousand, count three, fifty thousand, count four, five thousand, count five, one hundred and fifty thousand, um, for a total of four hundred and five K straight is how they listed it. 
and cash or good bond. And then it's saying no pretrial supervision, but so ankle monitor, things like that. She's not requiring it, but there's other bonds that he has that does require it. Right. So, um, even though this bond doesn't have that stipulation, other bonds that he has in place does have that stipulation. Um, so defendant either shall or shall not, and it's looking like shall not be subject to pretrial supervision. So I don't know. Um, He's got an order with this judge, but then the other judge, Judge Manning, has requested other things for his other charges. So it's just a culmination of all of those, right? Um, and this was so ordered on February 23rd, um, 2024. Also, the same stipulations still are in place. You will be notified of your next court date by mail. And then... Um, if you have a change of address, put that in. And then also are to have no contact directly or indirectly with the victim, victim's family, professional, personal, or close associates by phone, mail, email, or through a third party, including the victim's workplace, church, home, daycare. If you encounter the victim, you must leave immediately and must not come within 200 yards of the victim. And then there's victims' names, um, including the the victim, the victim um, regarding these above charges. Also, he they've listed his two daughters, which we've already known that in this case they've spelled the name with a S, not a Z. Um, which I don't know which one is the correct spelling or not. I'm going to just be honest. I don't know which one is her correct spelling because I've seen most of the other reports with the Z on the end. We see Sheridan and we also see um, the teacher. Okay. Um, the defendant must. Oh, so there is a condition right here on the bottom. Um, note next court date will is to be determined other conditions. So there is a statement stating that the defendant must wear an ankle monitor paid for by himself, surrender passport, no social media, no weapons or replicas, and cannot leave the state of Georgia. So they didn't restrict him to just Fulton County, but we know Judge Manning has restricted him to um, just Fulton County and not to leave the state of Georgia, I guess, without permission. Um, and so this was filed on Friday in the Fulton County Superior Court. And I obtained the copy yesterday. So that's that on that. I don't know if you guys had seen that or not, um, but that's that on that. So that's the official um, write-up from Friday. So had you guys seen that already? These streets are crazy out here. Girl, it's nuts. Um so we'll just we'll just put that in our file. I probably need to just go ahead and print that out now and go ahead and put that in my notebook so I do not lose it um, or just not lose it so much as just having it caught up in everything else. But yeah. Okay. You're welcome. My pleasure. Of course. I mean, we keep up with the case and the tea. Okay. Don't get it twisted. I don't care what Sonia, what lies Sonia is out here telling, but we we catch up on that TT and we also catch up on um on the facts. Okay. Um hello bougie gang. He is already guilty of not obeying this order. Absolutely. It well, it wasn't this order, it was Judge Manning's order, but it's a it's basically a very similar order, right? Judge Manning's order, um, her initial order on the CP cases. He violated that one. That's a hundred percent for sure. And he has other charges in the financial crimes unit. Um, some people I heard, and I think we talked about this the other day, but I just want to say it again. Some people were asking why Majeski wasn't there. Majeski is from the financial, the crime, the financial crimes unit. And because these were dealing with the essay crimes that was a whole different district attorney stack. So if you look, if you go to Fulton County and you look at, at 
um, District Attorney Fani Willis, and you see her structure, her leadership structure, and you see how her departments are broken up. They're broken up by classifications of crimes, and each classification has their own unit of district attorneys. So, um, cause I was trying, you know, I was like, okay, let me just to understand a little bit of the structure. And that is one of the reasons why you saw very specific attorneys. Um, you see very specific attorneys when it's on very specific cases. So the financial crimes, the conspiracy, things of that nature, uh, Kevin Majeski is well versed at speaking on those crimes because those are the ones that he's investigating and covering. I'm sure he's aware of the other things, but just like he and ADA Taylor both showed up on that day, she had the bulk of the information regarding the pictures, the um the CP situation, um the essay situation. He was speaking specifically to the um, the financial, the conspiracy, that whole thing with Erica King. Um, I did make kind of not a short, but like a fifteen minute kind of just a um, I don't know, kind of like a highlight reel, not a highlight. It's, ugh, why can't I get my words? Like a fifteen minute highlight per se on again the two civil actions that Nesto was involved in that he decided to bring Erica King to help him as an attorney, knowing or not knowing good and damn well, sis was not an attorney. So, okay. Um, but just to get refreshed on that, and I guess we'll just keep our eyes and ears open for the next court date. Um, I know one thing, the honorable judge Adams is not one to, I, you know, I'm gonna be honest. I don't think any of these judges in Fulton County are anything to play with because, um, judge McAfee, even though he seems kind of cool, I mean, he doesn't seem like you want to play with him either. You know what I mean? Um, the one from the trial, yes, from the hearing yesterday. Do you guys want to get into a little bit of uh, Terrence Bradley, or would you guys like to hear a little bit of Portia's situation? Um, or guys, I I don't know if you guys have even heard that already. So let's see. Let me show. Um. Okay, that's better. I don't know. I feel like this is a very short looking divorce. Um, let me see. I feel like this divorce filing is not giving what I thought it would be giving. I wish that they would have attached the prenuptial agreement with this. So you guys know Portia and Simon are in the middle of getting a divorce. Um, let me get this the long way so I can. Yeah, that's much better. Okay. Um, so Portia, Diane Williams, and Simon Gobadia. Uh, here comes petitioner. So it appears that Portia filed for the divorce. Okay. Let me mark this. Okay. Just one second. Okay. Um, it appears that Portia filed the divorce um, in Fulton County Superior Court. Um, and uh, so she's the petitioner. She filed against Simon Gobadia, uh, Simon Eeyore, uh, a.k.a. Eeyore Gobadia, um, comes now petitioner Portia Diane Williams by and through her counsel of record, Randall M. Kessler. Now, I feel like we've seen, remember Randy Kessler? He was on, he's been on The Real Housewives a couple of times. He's the very light, light, light skin looking man. Um, let me look him up. So you guys, as soon as you guys will see it, because as soon as I was like, not Randy Kessler again. You guys will know if you guys have watched Real Housewives, you know exactly who I'm talking about or Randy Kessler.
Okay. Is that his daughter and his son? Kessler's daughter, Jolie, in front of his daughter. So is his, okay, I guess we'll figure this out. But anyway, um, I'm not finding the picture that I wanted. Okay, hold on. Let's let's look at this first, and then we'll get into the pictures. Um, that name, Eeyore, was enough for me. Girl, no, please, not Portia. Well, okay, here comes now petitioner Portia Diane Williams, and through her counsel of record, Randall M. Kessler, wife has been a resident of the state of Georgia for six months prior to the date of filing the complaint. This is just three pages, guys. Um, respondent Simon is subject to the jurisdiction and venue of this court. I just, for some reason, I don't believe that this is, I don't know. I'm not going to say I don't believe it's really real because they actually did file it, but it just seems strange. In the event that husband does not acknowledge service of this action, service will be perfected as allowed by law. Wife and husband were lawfully married on or about November 25th, 2022, and are now currently living in a bona fide state of separation. There are no minor children born as issue of this marriage and none are expected. Wife is entitled to a divorce from husband on the grounds that the marriage is irretrievably broken as defined by the following statutes. There are no prospects for reconciliation. Further, wife is entitled to a total divorce that is a divorce, a vin vinculo matrimony in terms of the law of, in terms of the law from husband. Wife reserves her right to add additional grounds for divorce as permitted by law. Wife shows that husband and wife entered into a prenuptial agreement dated November 17th, which sets forth each party separate property, set, sets forth each party's separate property interests and marital property interests. Wife requests that said prenuptial agreement be enforced by this court and be made part of this court's final judgment and decree of divorce. Wife shows that the statute, Georgia uh, statute 19-5-7, provides the following with regards to transferring or disposition of property. After a petition of divorce has been filed, no property of property by either party except bona fide transfer in payment of pre-existing debts shall pass title so as to avoid the vesting thereof according to the final verdict of the jury in this case. Therefore, husband is bound by the provisions. So I'm just, what I would have liked to have known was what was in the prenuptial agreement. Like, is she getting some sort of a settlement? Um, does Simon really have any money? Which provide So further, husband is bound by the provisions which provide as follows with respect to the transferring or disposition of property pending the final determination by the court of the rights of either party or alimony, neither party shall make any substantial change in the assets of the party's estate, except in the course of ordinary business affairs, except a bona fide. So basically I think what this is saying is that like, don't make any sudden big financial moves. Um, during this divorce period. Thank you so much. Uh, the right one. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for supporting. I appreciate that. Let's keep going. Okay. Um, wife insists that husband comply with the foregoing statute in all respects. Husband is put on notice that of not only the law of the state of Georgia, but also on notice that wife's intent to insist on a full and absolute compliance by husband. Wife hereby places husband on notice of the following important provisions regarding spoilation of evidence. <laughs> you are hereby notified by Georgia law requires you to exercise reasonable care to protect and preserve evidence relative to issues in this case. By this notice, you are hereby given notice to not destroy, conceal, or alter any video, audio, paper, electronic files, 
or other data in connection with this pending litigation, including but not limited to any of the following items that are either presently in your possession or control or which may come into possession while this case is ongoing, any financial records or statements, all income records, tax records, expense records, all recordings or evidence reflecting relevant conduct by either party, any items that supports any defense raised by you to the complaint and or any items which support any claim made by you in counterclaim or pleading filed in this matter. You are further notified that failure to comply with this notice may result in sanctions for any uh, destruction or failures to preserve any such evidence. Um, I'm not really sure what they're talking about here other than basically, you know, things like cell phones, uh, paperwork, things like that. Anything that could be called and subpoenaed in relation to the financial, the business of their relationship or maybe reasons why the marriage could be broken. I'm not really sure, but basically it's putting Portia's attorney is putting Simon on notice that he should not get rid of anything that is relevant to this case at this time, basically. Um, so, um, Let's see, without limitations, adverse interference against you in the trial, as well as an award of expenses and attorney's fees uh, necessitate, um, necessitate by such conduct. Oh, I think someone just sent me a cash out. Thank you. Wait a second. Let's see. Thank you. Okay, guys, I did drop the link. So if anybody wants to call in, you're more than welcome to. Um, we'll just skip down. Proof of such conduct will raise a rebuttal, rebuttable presumption against Montgomery that the evidence favored Lane. So they're citing some case law here regarding that matter. Wife is hopeful that parties will reach an agreement settling all issues pending between them. However, um, if such an agreement cannot be reached, wife reserves the right to amend the complaint accordingly. Wife requests that the court incorporate any settlement agreement entered by the parties into final judgment and decree of divorce. I mean, it looks like it's amicable between the two of them. It doesn't seem like they're fighting. He hasn't come out saying anything against Portia. Um, by all accounts, it seems as though people are saying that this could be her storyline for the next season. So I don't know what you guys are thinking about that. I just find it really hard to believe that as much as Portia went at, to get this guy um, from Fallon, uh, because we saw what, two, three seasons ago, Portia went for Simon a hundred percent. She got him. She got married to him over a year ago. And now all of a sudden you guys are breaking up. Like that's just weird. Hey, Loretta. Thank you, Loretta, for coming through. Thank you. And Loretta just dropped 20 memberships, guys. Somebody may have just got pulled out the bushes. I don't know. Let's see. I know you guys are working. So um, let's see. Thank you, Loretta. Just me, Noel. Uh, is it Jatan Allen? Love. You got gifted. Okay. Um, Amanda M D B Michelle Flimpy, my blinky camera videos, Nicole D, Alyssa Martin, Golden Pearl T S. You got gifted. Okay. Um, Jazzy, you got gifted. Mile High Diva, Ms. Pun Miss Pumpkin 804, Kimberly. Jay Blitz, you got gifted. Moni in the middle. Okie dokie, you got gifted. Isn't that nice? Isn't that nice? So if you were not in the chat, you're in the chat. Scotch Bonnet, I think Scotch Bonnet, you got gifted. Kimberly, did I say that? I think I skipped Scotch Bonnet, but Scotch Bonnet, you got gifted. Um, I think I got everybody on here. So thank you, thank you, thank you. 
Um, if you got gifted in this live, come on through and say hi. Say what's up to everybody. Um, you have now entered the chat. Get on it, get on up in here. Okay. Um, okay. So that's basically what's going on. If you hadn't seen this, where am I? Just a second, guys. I'm trying to. Oh, I know where my tab is. Um, here we go. I was like, where's my tab? Um, but basically, so what I'm what I'm thinking, um, this one particular paragraph where they're talking about that they might reach wife is hopeful. So number 11, they say wife is hopeful. Um, the parties will reach an agreement settling all issues pending between them. However, if such an agreement cannot be reached, the wife reserves the right to amend this complaint accordingly. So I don't know what they're getting ready to come up with, but they filed this in court. Um, I think that it is, you know, I don't, not I don't not agree that this could be a storyline. How many people file for divorces? I mean, you should not be using the legal system to for storylines. You should not be using up the court's time um, filing paperwork that you do not intend to make good on. These two seem perfectly fine. The relationship seemed to be moving right along and folk were happy. Um, right before this happened. And all of a sudden they announced that Porsche is going back to Real Housewives. And, you know, Simon might not mind being the convenient bad guy. You know, this man has been married a ton of times. And him having a new wife, is that out of the order? Like a man being married four and five times, is that like a big deal? So, I mean, it, it's a big deal, but... Um, a man having many wives is not something that would be, that would surprise anybody. Let me say it like that. Right. Um, yes. Jay Blitz, you got gifted PW. I'm coming. Um, guys, we have a caller PW. I think you're on mute. Guys, we have a caller. Let me see. Can I, uh, I can't unmute you. So to unmute yourself, look at the bottom bar. There's a bar of options and, uh, just where it's right next to the camera. So I'm assuming your camera should be red because you have your camera off. Click next to the camera where it says mute microphone. And if you click on that, it'll unmute. Maybe that will help. Okay, now your device is not attached. Okay, so click. Um, gosh, now I don't know what to tell you to do. Um, whatever you did, do the opposite of what you just did. Okay, so call back in and then uh, take yourself off mute. Um, he owes a million dollars to to new and uh, net jets. Okay, okay. So do you think? So some people are saying this could be a financial maneuver. Um, for financial protection. Hi, January. Hey, boo boo. Um, let's see what PW. I'm there here. You go. Hey, how are you? I was like, will she get off mute? Yes. Okay. <laughs> how are you? Welcome. I'm good. It when it clicked me out and when I was oops, YouTube. And then when I tried to get back in StreamYard, and then I kind of lost my place. But I'm here. I'm oh, here. Oh, okay. So how? So welcome, welcome, welcome. It's Members and Mods Day today. So welcome. Um, what's what's your comment? Well, before I make a comment, I have two questions to kind of clarify the last um, Ernest and Sonya call. Yes. Okay. Um, go ahead. I felt like when Sonya was asking him about his daughters and which one that he was referring to initially that he was having problems with. And she clearly asked him, is that your youngest daughter? He was like, no, no, that's not her. She said, oh, so she's about 30. He was like, no, she's about 36. But then it seems like in the next conversation, uh, he was telling her that he, that's the, he was having problems out of the youngest daughter. That's the one that he was most concerned about. So I don't know if he was the one he refers to as bipolar, which I don't want to refer to her as that, but the one that has the mental health disorder, 
is that the youngest daughter or the second daughter? So, you know, first I'm going to have to say we we just only can speculate because we don't really know for sure. But he has referred to the oldest as bipolar. Now, I do think that over the past six months of listening to these calls, you know, when Nesto is talking and he's trying to talk in code, I'm going to just be honest. I don't think that anybody 100% knows what the hell he's talking about. Nobody knows 100% because he talks in circles and then he makes up names kind of as he goes along. So I agree with you. When she was asking about the youngest daughter, I would need to listen to that little part again just to kind of refresh exactly what he was referring to. But I remember that part. When he right. said, she said, oh, are you talking about the youngest? And he says, no, I'm talking about the other one. But I think he said something about the, I think he referred to the youngest, but he was speaking about the oldest. Do you know what I'm saying? Oh, okay. I think that he goes, you know how like, say your mom was talking about your sister, but she mentioned you because you do something just like her. So she might bring you up, but she's really not talking about you. She's talking about the other one, but it's like, how did I get in it? So, you know, I think it was one of those where he was, I think he has the most problems with quote unquote bipolar. Um, but it sounds like there is some history of mental illness and that's not uncommon. I mean, every, you know, I don't want to say every family, but no one is perfect out here. And some people have gone through trauma and some people are just, everyone's, it, every, some people's imperfect, like some people might not have a perfect heart. Some people don't have perfect blood pressure. Some people will end up with cancer. Like all of us have our, you know, we are, we are all going to have our crosses to bear. Right. So right. if, if his daughter is suffering with mental illness, that's not really her fault. Now it could be exacerbated and have, could have been uh, triggered by his piss poor parenting because that happens too. Some people are going to potentially develop something, may or may not, but something can be triggered by traumatic events. And it sounds like there was has been some trauma in in uh in his fatherhood. So, I don't know, but I agree with you. I think he was talking about one she asked him to clarify. I think he was focused on the other, but really and truly he was talking about both of them. So I don't know if that really answers your question or not, but I think you have a valid question because he goes in and out of talking about multiple topics and it sometimes it is hard to keep up. So I'm, I'm there with you. I'm with you on that. It was confusing. You there, PW? I'm here. Okay. So I'm there with you. I was equally confused. Yes. <laughs> now and I do agree with what you said with the when he did turn around and call his oldest daughter, it appears, that he was just grandstanding at that point. Because if you were about to get out, as he seemed like he was, he basically almost told uh Sonya to go ahead and be ready to pick him up from somewhere in about 40 okay. hours. Yeah. So it's it was like if you Actually, call who calls up their child and say, here, you actually have an inheritance that I might have mentioned to you about five years ago, but I'm calling to let you know, since daddy got in trouble, I'm going to snatch that back from you. But, you know, once this thing gets cleared in court, you'll get it back. It was no need unless like what somebody said, it might have even been you or um, someone on, in the chat that it's probably not in his name. If these acres exist. He yeah, didn't we, have any rights over it the way that he act like he did. It sounds like to me it 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 can't be in their name because if it's say you have you have a property right now, let's say you have 25 acres and you're you know your intent is to give it to your children, you don't have to ask them any permission. It's just in your will that on the day that you you pass, it's going to go to whomever you decided for it to go to. Even if it's in the name of a trust, if you control that trust, it's still yours to do with what the trust is, you know, stipulates, right? To me, it sounded like he was low key setting the stage to ask for permission to use the property. 
And it also made me think that maybe grandpa, papa, somebody, some a papa from somewhere put that into, maybe it's a family trust. Maybe it's not in his name. Maybe like there might be some different stipulations because it really did sound like he was trying to set something up for the people to use that for him, but it's not really necessarily his. So, yeah. And in true Nesto fashion, instead of just coming right out and saying what he meant, he was going all over the place. Girl. And then it's like, I think when it comes to his daughter, when she was on the phone, it seemed like she really was trying to listen to him. But I somewhat also got an impression, considering he really doesn't talk to her, that hadn't called her much at all that we know of, is she didn't want to like talk to her daddy for the second time since he'd been locked up in over a year uh, through another woman. I'm like, he don't even think about stuff like that. But that doesn't make your your daughter that you call everybody else jealous of, you putting her in that position to have to talk to you, not through her legal stepmother as far as she knows, but through some other woman. Right. Yeah. That's very awkward. That's very awkward. Like, do you imagine your weird ass dad all of a sudden calling you and you have to get to know this other lady and allegedly, according to him, Laverte and Shirley seem to have a pretty decent relation. You know, they talk. Yeah. And that is so inappropriate. He's such an inappropriate man to do such some of these things that he does, even though Laverte is grown and knows about life. She's got kids and everything. Right. It's very inappropriate to pull your kids into that type of mess, even as a grown woman, because I mean, how can you know, it's just, it's wrong. It's he's, he's such a despicable man. He really is disgusting. Yeah. I think he understands how his daughter feels about him or how he's made her feel ab about him. You know, it's almost like the pressure is on out of all these kids he has. The pressure is on only on about two of them to really just kind of be <laughs> his child and actually listen to all his bull crap whenever he feels like dealing with them or whatever. Right, because oh. she's the shining star. Right. Um, she's the one. Yes, Daddy. Yes, she's very respect. I mean, you could tell. You could hear. Her, I mean, she's got her military training, but she's very respectful. Yes, Daddy. Yes, Dad. Like she seems to be a very nice girl. Like she seems just to be a kind. She's got a very sweet voice. Um, she's very respectful, even though she probably knows that he is a nut job. She still gives him his respect. And right. entertains him, basically, you know? So, um, but yeah, Laverte seems very sweet. And it's unfortunate that they've had to be exposed to this mess. But yeah, some people are not, don't have the bandwidth to, you know, for some people, they know dad's crazy. And then there's some people that, that don't get it. And his other kids just might be very frustrated with his lies and manipulation. Because yeah, putting her on a pedestal in front of the other kids makes yeah. uh, makes the other kids feel some type of way right and thankfully she acknowledged that she was trying to reach out to you know some of her other siblings um and having martha number but martha may not just be talking to her and whoever else connected um uh, whatever sibling martha had just because they know how you are your dad's favorite and you're probably, I mean, they, whether she does or not, they probably feel like she's going to run back and still tell him stuff. So it's almost like, you know, you're guilty by association. So we don't want to have anything to do with Nesto and anybody who wants something to deal with Nesto, we just can't, we can't risk it at this point. Right. Yeah. So, and you know, she know Dion, Dion's uh, attitude when he picked up the phone and it was Nesto, he just immediately let it be known, like, I can't do much. Right. Dion is always in some sort of state of emergency with his money or somebody just got, someone just got ticked off. Somebody just got to jail. Somebody's passed on. It, Dion, Dion keeps the drama going. And I think Dion just, I don't know if Dion fully bought into the Kool-Aid as far as 
how his daddy feel about his siblings. Like you don't deal with them folk anyway, and he don't care who knows and, and all that stuff. But yeah, I think to a certain extent, if it comes to other women, Dion might be, regardless of whether they're a sister or not, uh, he might be on the same bull crap as his daddy. That's mm. not respecting him fully. Yeah, it's it's pretty sad. I mean, this this from this angle, um, and Tony Bellamy, uh, go ahead and get your device connected so when this call wraps up, I can come to you. Um, but right now it's saying your device is not connected. Um, this is really a sad view of the like the men who marry many women and um men who have multiple children with many moms because it's not always that everybody's going to be kumbaya sister wives oh come get your brother all that kind of stuff oftentimes when you've got people who are in weird situations you've got women who can't stand each other because they're fighting for attention of a man and these women don't want to know each other they're not going to get to know each other and then you've got siblings who don't, and then you've got a sibling situation like this, this, which is horrible. And I think Nesto also keeps these kids separate because they've all got stories to tell about their dad. And maybe Laverte doesn't have those stories because maybe he treated her a certain way, but right. Miss Ma'am, who he likes to call bipolar and the baby, they have stories. And it doesn't mean that those stories are not valid. It sounds like two of his exes in the beginning anyway was trying to work together with each other more than they were with him. If he said, yes, you know, yeah, one of them gave him their child, like, why wouldn't he be an option? But obviously we could tell why that might have been a smart choice. Then on top of that, I don't know who he said took. At first he was saying the 750000 was, I thought he said that the ex took it from him and that's why he don't talk to the ex anymore but then later he felt like it was one of the kids who took it and he said and gave it to the ex or something like something like Girl, that but the chat said yesterday it was seven hundred and fifty dollars okay so they what they started joking because like you know with nesto you can't take what he say verbatim girl yeah it's just a, he's just talking like we know girl it, like they it could have been a monopoly money Girl, it could have been anything. It could have been, but he said, "I I could swear he said seven hundred fifty thousand." Now, um, it was seven hundred fifty something. Now, if like I was saying yesterday, seven hundred fifty dollars is very petty to not speak to your daughter anymore. But there are people who don't speak to family over five dollars. So uh, we'll just leave it at that. But there was there was some money a money discrepancy with um, allegedly one of his daughters. But like to your point. He also mentioned having a money discrepancy with one of his baby moms. Um, what do you think is $750,000 in like, sir, where did you get that kind of money from? And I don't see his businesses making that type of money. If anything, it was something that he took from someone else or it might have been a business agreement that he could have had since at least with at least one of his exes, even though that's not who he was referring to. But um, I know he, you know, he's forever trying to start a business or something. So in his mind, you could have taken something from me, but it probably literally nobody took anything from him. Maybe he got cut out of a deal or something like that, because legal wise, I don't see Nesto as much as he liked to sue. And like you say, he's tried to sue his the jails he's been in. You know, as much as he loved the judicial system himself, I don't see him just letting that go. And the only re uh, resolution you have is I just don't speak to them anymore. That's, okay. that's the next though that we like heard. a big baby, a big baby. Um, maybe the daughter who's got so, there's some daughter who's got a business and sells some sort of like a yoni type cleanser. <laughs> I'm gonna just say it like that. She has a a women's hygiene product, I believe. Yeah. Maybe she got, you know, there's people who've sold stuff on Instagram as quiet as it's kept and made a million dollars. I don't know. Is that, did he invest something? You know what I mean? It could be, which since we're on speculations, it could be something like that where, you know, the that one, um, her business, maybe she was supposed to cut him into something and did not. I don't know. 
You know what I mean? Because I just, I don't see, I don't see. Go ahead. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. In order for him not to even seeming like he had sued anybody or tried to pursue it in any real way, and his resolution was, so I don't even talk to them folk no more. No, no. I think it could have been something in his mind he felt like he should have gotten. He didn't actually have the money. Or like you said, even a bit, or like I said, the business deal, but what you added as far as he probably wasn't a part of it and stuff like that. Absolutely. That's so in his mind should have gotten $750,000 from either his uh, ex or one of his kids. And yeah. Mm, so maybe Carol Lamar, because Carol Lamar was successful with business. I don't know if she made a million dollars in her business. His daughter could have potentially, because like I said, as quiet as it's kept, people are selling hair tonics, oils, body butters, candles, and all kinds of mess on this internet and are quietly stacking lots and lots of bread. So I don't know what his daughter was doing, but that is definitely a option of where that kind of money could have come to play. Um, because the internet is a fool and you don't really see that money being made like that, but it happens very quickly. Um, so that's possible, but he's got it in his head that somebody cheated him out some money. Nesto also, to me, I think it became obvious in that call also, cause it was quite painful to listen to, just because of just the slow drag of his speech, but just the overall kind of like, I think just the almost like a year over a year of being in that confined space and with the type of people that he's being housed with, it just seems like his mental illness is starting to show. It's either mental illness or it's some side effects of just his cognitive deficiencies in general, um, he's starting to, it seemed to me, he's almost starting to decline. I don't, I, ca I can't put a tag to it. I'm not a medical doctor, but he doesn't seem as able to express himself like a year later as he was when he first got up in there. Cause he was talking a lot of shit when he first got into jail. Now it's been a little over a year and he just, some, some days he's just off. Right. It's like, damn, what's Nesto, wrong with you? Nesto gave off to me based on what everybody seems to know what his routine was. Get up, get him some coffee, walk around, do whatever it is he, he did. As much as I think that he was out in the street um, a lot just because he didn't, um, quote unquote, want to be home. But again, that's probably not what it is. I think Nesto is this type of person who just can't sit down. I don't think that's in him. And being confined is like the worst thing for a person like that, who is, he's on the go, not only because he's trying to handle business, according to him, but he's on the go because that's just not what he does. And I bet you he always slept very little. Nesto, I can't see Nesto trying to get a quality eight to 10 hours of sleep or something like that at night. Nesto mm. probably sleeps a max four hours of sleep and, and he's up. That's why he probably thrives so much in a 24 hour anxiety. He's yeah. got, he's, he clearly has anxiety. Anxiety. He probably got ADHD and mm -hmm. he, and several times we've seen like he's might've, he might've been manic. Like at some points he definitely, his brain is working overtime that it mm -hmm. doesn't allow him to verbalize himself in, in a way that is accurate of where even people who know him can understand. Most of the time. Well, and you know, lack of sleep is going to have an effect on you, plus poor nutrition. I right. mean, he's he's in a perfect storm. If he's if he's got some mental, some low-lying mental illness, you know, that gets triggered from time to time, poor nutrition, high carbohydrates, lack of quality protein, he's not sleeping well. And I'm not saying these things to feel sorry for him. Nobody needs to feel sorry for him because I sure don't. He put himself where he's at. But these are all the recipe to start to lose your damn mind. He's not eating well. He's not sleeping well. He's suffering from anxiety. He might not be getting all of his meds. And he is painted himself into a corner. So he probably he feels some type of way and he can't get it controlled by his medicine. 
and his nutrition is bad and his sleep is bad. All of that can probably drive somebody nuts. Nesto drove that man nuts who gave him the encyclopedia and the dictionary in prison. Because, okay. again, <laughs> Sonya was kind of cutting him off. When he was, I mean, not Sonya, but I think it was um, kind of that cut him off a little bit. But he, the last couple of words he dragged off, he said, the man said, well, you don't really know how to talk right. And he gave him that. Like, that man couldn't take it. He couldn't take it. So yeah, Nesto he handed him a book. <laughs> He handed him the encyclopedia. Absolutely. He was tired of Nesto not talking right. And thinking mm -hmm. everybody, um, I don't know if that was a movie or something. I always make a movie reference when I call here. But it was like, you could see somebody and you really think they should be ex ex um, understanding you. But everybody's looking at you and kind of find out you were talking gibberish the entire time. <laughs> Stop it. <laughs> He thinks everyone's the problem, but it's really him the problem. Yeah. That's funny. Um, That's let me, Dion let me read this to you real quick. Uh, someone said, this lady, Cynthia, said, if he said Augusta, Georgia, he did say Augusta. He's he's born and raised in Augusta. There are two properties with a Ernest Williams listed as an owner. One, one he was co-owner for several others, if that is him. So one thing to do, Cynthia, if you could look that property back up again, it's Ernest L. Williams Jr. is his full legal. Doesn't mean that that's what's on it, but it, um, can you relook that up and then send me a link to it or screenshot it and email it to me so we could take a look? Um, I appreciate you bubbling that up, but yeah, Augusta is where Sir is from. Um, what else were you saying, PW? Um, I said, I was saying that I think that's why Dion also got so frustrated that day, especially you talking about some Georgia heat in the summer and you calling me, yeah, daddy, any other day I could, I could try to, you know, play these games with you and read between the lines, but today, not today. Right. And never once does he, I, I don't think he doesn't ask Dion about how his case is going because he really doesn't want it criminalize uh Dion on the phone. I think he doesn't care. He acts like Dion has nothing going on in his life. Right. Or just that Nader's that he Nest Nesto he's a hater um, because he doesn't he doesn't really care he just wants to come and and drop off his BS on everybody rather than asking son are you okay um, that's so, yeah. why he murder charge up in there because some kind of way Dion back on the streets even though he's accused you know even though he's knowingly a shot. We just, I guess he, the whole motive behind it, I'm not really sure what that case is supposed to be based on, but yeah, your son, you probably low key hating that your son and whoever lawyer that he has, which that's the lawyer you probably should ask for, um, right. is out on the streets and he pow pow two people in a mall. So yeah. Right. And not even supposed to have a weapon because he's a, he's a convicted felon too. Right, right, right. So Look, uh, yeah, Nesto, for his son's lawyer. Nesto has been out here doing the most, and unfortunately for him, it's it's just not cute anymore. You know, there's a certain point your luck starts to run out, and your and you your luck runs out, and your chances run out. You know, I just need someone to give me a chance. Da, 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 da. Sometimes you're chanced out. Right. One time I was in a meeting and one of our, the leadership said, you know what, with this project, we're chanced out. And I never forgot that because you don't always get a chance to mess up. This is a situation where the business is relying on us not to fuck this up. We don't have chances. <laughs> you know what right. I mean? Like there right. is no chances left. So what Nesto has to understand is, sir, you're chanced out. Nobody is trying to mess with you like that anymore. You're 60, so, sir, and your uh, side hand only keeps referring to when she got in trouble in her 20s. Okay, cool. But Nesto is not a 20-something. He's well beyond that. <laughs> he should not be you, you reminiscing of how your family was there for you to pull you back out and, and help you time and time again when you was 20-something and a single parent. That's not Nesto's situation. You cannot compare the two. Stop doing right. it. 
mama's I, mama's gone daddy's gone when when you reach a certain point in your life and the people who kind of are more obligated to help you which they're not but sort of right um I, as a mother i feel oblig i would help my daughter for anything that she needs and wants right um when i'm gone and her daddy's gone when we are gone i don't know that there's going to be anyone else out here like that for her other than maybe her husband and her kids, she doesn't have any siblings, right? So right. some uh, you got to you you know sometimes you you right you don't run out of chances, or you don't have that support system that will do any and everything like the fifty thousand. Like what Sonya has to understand, it's every man for himself at a certain age, right? And Dre doesn't have to. I would not give up. Like I said, unless you got my blood, the same blood as me or you live in this house and we got the same names, you are not getting, I, I'm not doing for you what I would do. I would, I would only do for you that I would not do for anybody else. There's what? very few people that I would do the most for. And that's because I'm at an age where I got to have my back because what if something happens to us up under this roof? I can't rely on everybody else to come through for us. They might not even be in a position. And Dre is definitely getting close to a retirement age. He don't want to be driving them things or the bills. He has a son. So yeah, right. He has his own son. Dre, his mom apparently is still alive. Thank goodness. And yeah, he got family. I mean, he got family right. that really, really messes with him and loves him. And he doesn't care. He doesn't care. But you know, he had talked about Dre again. He did say that brief thing in that last phone call, saying how what he said. Uh. Maybe, you know, you sitting down there for a reason. I think that's what he was talking about, referring back to what Dre said. You need to really yes. think about why you might be in there. I said, like, okay, there you go. Talking about that man again. So we'll You're see. Mad. How mad yeah. because he's really trying to have him be reflective. Joey, I see you backstage. Um, he's just asking, you know, at a certain point in our life when you have um, emotional intelligence, there's time where you can actually sit back and try to, you know, things happen. It may not necessarily be your fault, but to be able to sit back and understand how maybe you put yourself in this position, even if it's not your fault, it doesn't make you a bad person. He's just asking him to sit back and reflect, reflect on your life. What have, what has happened for you to be where you are at Nesto, rather than taking that opportunity, he's mad. He's insulted. Yeah, big baby. He's a big baby. Yeah. You yeah. Know, so you Sonya, yeah, got a lot that she's going to be working with. Potentially. I wish I could follow them. If, if she had enough sense, I would have been and tried to sign them up for love at the lockup. Well, that's what girl. they do. Now it will be the senior edition. They'll probably be the oldest couple that they girl. ever had. I promise Wait, like like golden bachelor it'll be golden love after lockup <laughs> and she really want to try to make some money off of this relationship mm -hmm. that might let them stay for a little while longer too well you That's know that they don't typically make it past a season or two right so. but um, PW, all I had, yeah PW, it was nice talking to you. You have a wonderful day. I appreciate you so much. Thank you for coming through. Oh, thank you so much, friend. Okay. All right. You take care now. Have a good afternoon. All right. You too. Bye -bye. Okay. All right. Bye-bye. Guys, it's everyone's favorite. It's Joey Dog. What's going on, Joey? Hello, Francois. How are you? <laughs> Hi, Joey. How are you? Okay, what's you going on? I can hear you perfect. How's, what's going on? Nothing. What do you want to talk about today? What can um, I enlighten you with? So funny. Um, so many things have changed since you last called in. I see. So I've things seen. Things have changed. Yeah. Um, when you last, so it's been at least a couple of weeks. Had the CP charges been dismissed at that moment? Uh, I do believe they had. I, I think okay. they, 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 and remember from the very beginning, I said something's very strange about those charges. Yes, so, Joey, you kinda, called that out. Yeah. You hit that yeah, one. You said it yeah, wasn't going to go anywhere. Yeah. yeah, something strange about that. And he has a bond now, which, uh, in my opinion, he should have had one sooner. 
because there's something going on with there's something going on with the courts. I know it. I know people want to hate him. I know people think that he's a horrible person, but that doesn't negate the fact that you can't use the criminal justice system to punish people that haven't been found guilty of a crime. And it mm-hmm. seems that that's what's going on here. Uh, this guy's been in jail almost, it's almost coming up on two years. It's going to, it's mm-hmm. getting close to that. And he hasn't really been, he hasn't been indicted yet. Uh, so I'm a little, I'm a little bothered by the fact that it's taking so long. And I watched judge Adams. I watched the, uh, the, uh, the, the, uh, the last bail hearing. And even, even with completely fairly incompetent prosecutors, the judges are helping. They're still keeping this guy locked down. Any other, any other judge, if you don't have your stuff together straight as a prosecutor, the judge is going to let the guy go. They're going to say, you didn't do your job. So, you know, uh, you didn't, you didn't prove your case to keep him locked up forever. And, uh, your, your defense is going to argue their case and you're going to get a, 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 a better outcome than what he's getting. So I don't, I don't know what's going on with this, but, uh, he's, it's kind of troubling that I don't like what I'm seeing. Uh, so the outcry statement. So yeah, so I think it's kind of like, it's a little bit of like that movie, the minority report where people are kind of being held against what the, computer or the algorithm thinks that you are going to do based on many different variables versus what actually could and has happened. Correct. You think so he's, he's kind of, so, I mean, but you know, he does have a history. He's not a likable person. We do know that, um, unfortunately this seems to be systematic in Fulton County, but I think sometimes criminals, people who are accused of crimes, let's put it that way. Um, when they don't get a bail right away, it doesn't it doesn't really look good for you because sometimes people's general opinion is if it wasn't so bad or if you had money or you had means or something, you would have gotten a bond or you would have been able to make bail. So I guess the longer you sit, the more it looks worse, like the more the the less favorable it looks to a jury or to your case do you find that to be true i find or not it, maybe accurate but that seems to be what happens it, it, it can but what i'm what in his case see this is how this is you know there's a saying that even a broken clock is right twice a day absolutely mm-hmm. he is correct you know they have been uh spoon feeding these charges out they've been they've been timing them at every 90 day intervals to kind of keep him in jail or whatever. And instead of just throwing everything at him that you had it at one time. So that, that I'll go on, I'll go on record again to tell you that I'm really bothered by that. Cause that's, that's not how the justice system is supposed to work. If you got something you want to, if you want to do something, you need to do it. You don't kind of dribble and drab these things out to keep the person locked up. So, but be that as it may, he has a bond now. I don't think he has. Well, I, I, I'm curious to see if he has the resources to actually get out. I don't think so. I, I, don't, I don't think, think he so. does either. I think that that I think uh, the conversation six, eight months ago about this property he allegedly has, I think, is some sort of. Um, I don't know. Some it was either some sort of fabrication or part of his mental illness or both um, that had him talking big to try to impress Sonya or to try to deploy or gin up his supporters or something. I'm not sure what he was trying to do, um, but making it seem as though he had resources and he you don't because. This is in June that we're hearing about this property, right? But in September and November, September, October, November, when he fell out with Dre, he was calling and asking people to for $10,000 for a lawyer. So what happened to the property? You're talking about property in June, but in September, October, November, you're begging for $10,000, $15,000 for new lawyers from everybody. So... 
you know what I mean? I know the timeline keeps, you know, go it goes back and forth in time. So it's like you really have to pay attention to the dates, but he doesn't he's he hasn't been talking about this property in the future. I, which I don't is think now. He, I don't think that's I think he was using that property as a again, he he's always again this guy's he seems to me he appears to always to be gaming things all the time. And there's a lot of and there's so many there's so many misrepresentations and lies being thrown around that it's hard to keep up sometimes. I think mm -hmm. he was trying to use that that I think he was trying to curry some favor with his daughter by using mm -hmm. that, mm -hmm. that 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 you know by the way uh, you know th that whole conversation started very weird. Uh yeah, thanks for uh, thanks know, for making me father of the year. Of that, the year that, right. Yeah, super, or father super of dad, the century or yeah. Super dad, whatever. Mm -hmm. And uh, by the way, in case you didn't know, I have this I have this 25 I have this land put away for you guys uh, in trust and uh, I'm going to use it for this, but I also have money for the grandkids. There's something he's they're doing he's doing what he always kind of does. They lead with material wealth to get you in to get you to do things for them with a you start thinking that you're going to be able to get some of this and only to find out that there's nothing there at the end right incentivizing so I, right um, you so. going and reaching out to your sisters because you correct. know they're jealous of you anyway correct. um correct, correct. and it's, most it's really most, sick it's very sick what he's doing and most of the time when you have for people like that, when they have land, like in, in in the country out in South Carolina, as he says, it's usually heirs' property that you can't dispose of anyway, that you can't really do anything with anyway, because you need multiple people to sign off on it. So, uh, and just paying the taxes doesn't necessarily mean that, that, that you know it's that you get to do that. So you you never, but that land thing never materialized, or maybe it, he didn't get in as maybe he's, or maybe he he's used it. And it's just not enough. It's covered as it's covered as lawyer fees, but that's it. Yeah, um, it's that's quite possible. But yeah, I think uh, I just don't feel like it exists. I, you know, I hear him talking and I heard what he said. I don't believe it. I don't believe about the 700. Uh, anything that he mentions, I feel like he's destitute. They say he's indigent really and I believe he's indigent. I think that yes. whatever money he had was tied very closely into Shirley Strawberry. He of is course. very much salty about Shirley um, deciding that she is done with his antics. And um, I don't blame her because she has dragged, he's dragged her to where, it, I mean, her own, her own paycheck is, is uh, on the line. I think right. not just from a Steve Harvey standpoint, I think just from a the court of public opinion, like people don't even think she's fit to do the strawberry letter anymore. So well, um, I just think that she has self preservations, number one, and this guy doesn't care about you. And the women are looking at her like, ma'am, cut and run because like, how are you going to give knew. advice? She uh -huh. knew. I think she knew. Of, I think she. I still believe that she had knowledge of his, of whatever he was doing. She didn't know everything, but, yeah. but she knew he was in this. She knew he was into some shenanigans. I think she knew. She had to know. And again, I don't want to see her saying that she didn't because you did. Uh, and, but in the end, yeah, he needs her resources to get out, and. Which goes back to the the lawyer. Remember the lawyer debacle? How he essentially cussed the lawyer out because the lawyer was talking to Shirley. Yes, uh, mm -hmm. that part has always bothered me because, like, who? Why would you just pay for the lawyer and how? Who pays for a lawyer and not ask the lawyer what am I paying for? What's going on? And who who willingly does that? 
<sighs> I mean, I know Shirley's busy, and I know Shirley seems to be very caught up in what she's doing, but as a wife, and you're not even fi trying to find out, like, what's the status of his case? Correct. What do we need? What other resources do I need to, you know, Correct. like, what do I need to do to get my husband out? Correct. Period. That's, like, that's, that's, that's what I would be me. asking. You know? That is the tell. That was the tell for me. Because no wife, no boyfriend, no girlfriend, no aunt, uncle or aunt or cousin or father or mother is going to be paying the bill for your lawyer and not asking the lawyer what is going on with this. Nobody right. does that. Nobody pays a bill and 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 actually and, and willingly accepts not being told what's going on other than a person who who kind of knows what's going on but has the wherewithal to not want to know what's going on so or to be able to plead uh you know ignorance in the end right like she so, turns it, a blind eye right you know uh deniability so that's how I knew that that's, that's what that that's the thing that gave it away for me. I'm like, okay, she knew because there's so no way you could do that with me. Really quick, so um, sure. <laughs> one of, in the chat, uh, someone says, if Joey says it's civil, I'm logging off. I I think Joey, this is my read on what Joey's saying. I think just from a legal law, the way the law is supposed to work, it just seems like there's just some. Uh, there's some weird stuff about how law is being practiced in Fulton County, not as it pertains to Nesto, but I guess as it is including Nesto at this moment to see how this thing is playing out. This is not how it's supposed to work, but I don't believe that you're saying that Nesto doesn't necessarily deserve uh, no, to be I where he's at. It's no. just this isn't how the legal system is to work, that it seems as though whoever is managing his cases are using some sort of strategy to be able to kind of continue to keep him painted in a corner, um, that every time he gets a glimmer of st stepping his pinky toe out, he can't get out. Um, right. But he has everything lined up now to get out of Fulton County. So it's really on him. So that argument is kind of gone at this moment because he has achieved a bond on everything that he needed a bond on to be able to get out. Now he doesn't have any money. Um, and he also still has to go to Henry County. So I don't know if that's what he meant. Can you can you speak to that? People want to people are saying if Joey says it's civil, they're out. Like, what, what oh. do you have to say about that? <laughs> Well, I don't say what I'm saying is he hasn't been indicted. He hasn't been to court yet. So you're still innocent until proven guilty. I'm just saying right. in a criminal justice system, you want the system to work. And always remember, don't look at Ernest in jail. Look at your brother or your sister or your uncle or your aunt or somebody that you know that was in jail. What would mm -hmm. you want for them? All right. And accusations are, are the accusations are just that I can accuse you of anything. That doesn't mean you actually did it. So right. just and remember, the, the, it's, he's in jail. He's not in prison. J the jail is full of innocent people because you haven't been convicted yet. So I, I just think that they've kind of they've kind of they've kinda stacked it against him to kind of keep him in jail. I uh, mean, I, he may have whatever, pissed somebody off. Reason, that's possible for whatever reason. Yeah, I mean, I think he pissed somebody off or someone's mad. He messed it's, with it's, Shirley. It's, 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 uh, so Shirley might I, have I a niece somewhere. <laughs> she may, but I just don't think that's, I don't think that that you should, we shouldn't use the, the system to, we shouldn't use the system. To... No, I, I agree. You should not use it I mean, as your own personal, uh, you know, uh, so call, justice. You, shouldn't do that. you should, you yeah, know, you should. Justice should be justice should be meted out uh, after a jury was found you guilty after we've seen it. not what people are saying or what we've heard. Or what we've it's just, I mean, I'm just I'm I'm that guy. I'm not saying. No, I I uh, hear what you're saying. And I've and told you, if if, 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 the, if the world were full of me's, Ernest would never be in jail. You know why? Because he wouldn't get a dime. 
from anybody. <laughs> he would never, he would never. I don't know how. To so this, day, I don't whole, know how. this whole thing would never have happened. There wouldn't be a, a real happened. estate agent. There wouldn't be a teacher. He wouldn't no. have had the opportunity to swindle the people, right? So you're had, you're on the good guy side. He wouldn't have had the opportunity to be accused of swindling anybody. Mm. Because he because again, these are these are all accusations. He wouldn't have had the chance to be accused of swindling anybody. I am still and what? I am still, I am still quite concerned. I'm still, I still want to understand how intelligent, well-meaning people, you know, people that have jobs and they have bank accounts and they have cars and they have homes are, are allow this, uh, ha, are, have said that they allowed this man who literally sounds like he comes out of a <laughs> comes from a Looney Tunes cartoon <laughs> to to talk them out of their their money and their resources. I don't understand it. I just don't. I really and the more we hear him on the the more we the more we listen to him in these conversations with uh between Dre and Sonya, you realize that he doesn't really know, he's not that bright He's not that bright. And he always said, here's how you know he's not very bright, because he says, I'm not an idiot. He always says, oh, my God. He, an and no, he also says, I'm not slow. It's like, sir, yes, slow. you are. You're very which slow. Means, which means you are. The very definition <laughs> of a person that is slow is the person that says, I'm not slow. Wait, but what about when he sat and read his letter? Do you believe... Do you believe that Nesta was actually reading a letter, or was he just talking? Because the he way was, he, he was, was reading was not giving a, reading he, he to was, me. He was, doing a, he was doing a combination of both. He was reading it and talking at the same time. The funny part was when Shirley said, I've never heard you use these words before. I thought that was absolutely hilarious. Because... <gasps> oh, God. That because, was so funny. Which goes back to my statement again. He and Shirley did not have a... They were not really married. They didn't really know each other. They didn't know each other at all. The conversations that they're having are like they're two people meeting for the first time. Like they're getting to know each other. The conversation Shirley had with him about her mother, uh, that was the conversation that you would have had. You've been married eight years. You would have had that conversation before you got married, year one, maybe. I remember her asking him how many grandchildren did he have. Yeah. It was a conversation way back. It wasn't Sonya. It was Shirley. And she wanted to know how many. I'm like, how many grandchildren does he? Didn't that come up when you? She became a grandmother while they were married. Because yeah. Sheridan got pregnant maybe a year or so after they got married. How in the world did you become a grandmother? And she had an issue with because, with her daughter getting pregnant. Um and was upset about that. KK Bonita, thank you so much for the four ninety nine. I appreciate that, sis. Um, they don't know each did, other. They they, they don't, don't know each other at all. At all. How do you they become don't. a grandmother? And your man is a grandmother of several children, and he seems to be quite proud of that fact. And you don't know how many grandchildren he has. That is very strange. Because very strange. Again, that doesn't know her. Yeah. That wedding was a publicity stunt that went wrong, horribly wrong. And he that's took all they must have went on the honeymoon and she kind of liked she liked what she got to experience. Um and and it just it went on and on and on. I think she liked the attention. She liked to be queen for a day. She got that spread in essence. She liked the attention. And but but she didn't know how to you don't she didn't know how to get off the roller coaster. She's on this thing and she did and she couldn't get off of it without looking you know without looking what she could have done was get what she could have gotten rid of him early on and she would have she would have fared better than what than now. To get rid of him now, which is what she's doing, it, it, it begs the question, uh, how bad did it have to be before you got rid of the guy? And I'm not a big proponent of getting rid of folks, but he he played. He told you who he was very early on in the marriage, within the, within a year. So you knew what kind of person he, he was. So you signed on to that. You agreed to that. So 
I just don't. I find it disingenuous to be all shocked now, because you, you knew you knew who he was. When Shirley he said was. that she didn't know who was calling from the police department, that's when I was like, Shirley, stop it. Shirley, he's been to jail how many times since you guys have been married? Like, you got to be kidding me. Um, Shirley, and then um, the uh, did you see the Charleston White interview when he's talking about Erica King and the booty shorts and how they reeled him into? Um, taking his first the revenue from his first YouTube channel and a couple of things like the story seemed quite plausible, but the facts like the details were kind of sketchy for me. That's why I really haven't I hadn't reacted to it because I just don't I don't want to get I don't want to muddy the waters with people who might come to my channel who are new and I'm and it's and it's a bunch of stuff that I can't even just I don't even understand. But I do think that some of the his encounter with Erica King did sound like it was possible. Um, would you entertain? I know you're gonna. What's your answer? So I'm just gonna. Would you entertain putting your house up for Nesto? I'm just gonna ask it like that because someone said somebody no. somebody's making there. You know, there's a little bit of, uh, no, of course conjecture in the chat um, regarding some of your sentiments. Um, do you do you think that Nesto is a bad guy? I'm I'm asking what, what, that. Do you what, think what, he's a what, bad guy? What what I will say is, um, do I do I think he's a bad? Yeah. In all in all fairness, well, okay, my opinion. Don't be fair. Just give it, us your opinion. It, just my, just give my, us it, Joey C. Dog, please. In my opinion, <laughs> I don't think he's a good guy, but okay. Your phone's cutting out. Joey, we, we're losing you. Does anyone... Um, so when Joey... Joey, we can't hear you at this moment, so we're just waiting for you to come back. Um, anyone have any rebuttal to this? I'm sure someone's got something to say on the opposite side. Um, I, I get it that we want our court system to be fair. Joey, I can't hear you at all. So if you could maybe maybe drop down and then try to rejoin, uh, maybe that'll do it. Because, you know, sometimes the compute, you know, sometimes there's like a glitch. Okay, Joey, drop down. He'll be back. Um, look, I think we've all shared our sentiments about Shirley and her um responsibility in this matter. I don't think Shirley is responsible for Nesto going and running around with with the teacher or the real estate agent. Um we've all shared opinions about Shirley. Um at the end of the day, I think Nesto is where he's supposed where he's he's where he's at because of what he's put himself into. There's just no doubt about it. And if unfortunately Fulton County likes to use a specific strategy to keep people behind bars, um, to keep the people safe of the city of Atlanta. It's unfortunate. Don't get your ass in Fulton County jail. That's what I would say. So that might seem heartless to some people. And then to some people it's spot on, but that's, that's just what I think. Cause there's plenty of people who will never be in the jail, including uh, you know, somebody's uncle, brother, boyfriend, husband, or friend. You know what I mean? Like, even though we want the fair justice, there's people who can say confidently, well, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna have that experience, or I haven't had that experience. And even when I had that experience, it was fair. Uh, IMO. I never what is IMO? Guys, let me say IMO. It's gonna be something easy, and I'm gonna be like, what? Um, KK, help me with IMO. What does IMO mean? Um, what is IMO used for? Instant messaging. <laughs> In my opinion. Okay, thank you. I found it. Okay, hold on. Okay, who's back? Oh, Joey's back. Okay. In my opinion, 
Shirley should start her own Who the fuck did I marry series weekly in the morning show. I, I don't think she's going to do it. She's too embarrassed. She knows she messed up with Nesto. And that's not victim shaming. That's just the truth. Okay, Joey, you sound, uh, it sounds more clear now. Okay. Okay, I'm back. I'm back. Okay. We lost you at whatever part I said we couldn't hear you, if you recall. I don't recall. Where was I? Oh, my God. That was um, I think the sentiment, I think people are, you know, they're hearing what you're saying. And I feel like they, I know, I get the feeling that you want the justice system to be safe. I mean, to be fair all the way around. And I get it. Um, I think that, unfortunately, Nesto, the situation with him and what's happened so far, even in the wake of the who the fuck did I marry type of thing, I think that unfortunately he's going to have to deal with the triggers of the community. You know, he has, he's been a menace to the community and people do not feel sorry for him. And unfortunately the way Fulton County seems to do business and operate, he's just kind of a victim of his own shenanigans. Like he wouldn't be dealing with this if he wasn't outside doing the most. I hope that that probably conveys the sentiment of the chat. I feel like that. I, I, I don't disagree with you. I think he, mm -hmm. he is where he is because of his own doing, but I, 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 I just, I just don't, he's a, he, the problem is he's a, he's a bad caricature because the next person that gets that right, that gets that ride may not deserve, may not deserve it. Right. So we just, we just want to avoid that kind of thing. That's all. And because he's going to get his due day in court and we're going to find out everything. And we're going to learn what he, what was, what was actually happening. Cause there are two sides of every story. I haven't heard, we haven't heard his version of anything yet. So we don't know. I'm just shocked that he Kate. So my experience from TV, um, Indy, I see your comment. I'm sorry, babe. If you've got something to bubble up, just drop it and I'll, I'll get to it. Um, just drop it off down towards the, like, just go ahead and drop your comment, sis, and I'll, um, is this it right here? Joey, it's not, um, it's not, it may not seem that's how the law is supposed to work. However, every jurisdiction has their own territorial jurisdiction. So there's that. Personal opinions have nothing to do with it. Right. So it's, justice is being served up how it's served up in that area. And even though it might not be what they do in New York or Boston or LA or whatever, like how LA is not trying to extradite him. Um, you know, they, people, they pick their own poison. Right. So um, I guess people just, you know, Nesto has a particular uh, Nesto, unfortunately has people that just don't fuck with him like that on this internet. I'm just going to say it like that. I'm sure they, <laughs> that's the I'm best sure way they, I can put it. I'm sure they don't. I'm, I'm, I'm sure they don't. I'm just, you, remember, I don't, it's not about the personal personalities for me. It's about the, the legal aspects of it. And I just want to see the legal system work in a, in, in a way that we can all understand it and see it. So we know what's going on. And again, once it goes to court, we're going to find out everything then. And then you can learn, then you, then you know what happened. And then we right. can know what the, what the what punishments or none or not punishments can go from there. But right now, I just uh, I, I am I'm, I am there's a you know he has his bond. Can he get out? I don't know. Uh, but we just haven't heard his version. If he has a version of the story with, that I'm very curious to hear, I just want to hear his version of the story. I, I, how did you find yourself in this situation? Why are these people making these accusations? Why are they saying this about you? Why do, you know, how, how did, you know, if it's a, if it's a, if it's a, uh, if it's a mis, if it's a misunderstanding, then why is it a misunderstanding? If it's, uh, if you take the Sonya, I'm not going to say civil. If you take the Sonya <laughs> line, <laughs> and Sonya is terrible. Sonya's the worst person for she's you ever. She's the worst. She's so she's the ignorant. Worst. She's so just a little smarter than him, and I, and Sonya, that's not even giving a lot of credit. <laughs> Sonya basically is saying, "Oh, you did it to him, but you did, but it shouldn't be tried in, but in this civil. court. It's civil. But it should be in a civil court." So, it, I, I just want to find out the, the truth. I just want to find out the truth of the matter, 
Uh, and then we go from there. And because I have my personal opinions on it, you know, I, I don't think he's I don't think he's a good guy at all. I mean, but I don't know how people didn't see if you talk to him for three minutes, four minutes, you will know that he is not a good guy. And I don't know how I mean, no one he couldn't have got that. five cents for me. He's look, he's out. Look, Joey, I don't want to be too. I don't want to be disrespectful at all across the board. He's out here slaying on the streets of Atlanta. He's out here doing things. He's he's out here. He's like he's probably some sort of male prostitute. I'm going to say it like that. He's been out here slaying the ladies and that's how he got them out their money. He probably Nail wears a nice he probably wears a good cologne and he's wearing nice suits and nice shoes even though we saw him in ugly jeans and Nesto t-shirts. He was out here showing up in Rolls Royces and schmoozing the ladies of Atlanta. Okay. Using Shirley's I name. I just yes, that's exact. Again, he leads with he leads with his cars, he led with Shirley. Somehow, mm -hmm. if I put up in a nice car and I have my Instagram with Shirley's picture all over it, I'm able to get you to you. I, I'm able to talk you, random woman, out of her panties within a matter of a day. I don't my understand goodness. that. Mm -hmm. I don't understand. I don't get Tonya and your and your wallet the two days later. I don't understand how. He, and, and I think you think he was trying to grift on Sonya. He thought Sonya was some sort of fast Sonya, chick with a little bit of coins Sonya because. I was drifting on him. Uh, okay. Yeah, I think that's it's the other way around. Sonia was drifting on him. He was looking for another, uh, another, another Erica uh, King, another target to practice his bag of dicks trick on, <laughs> and um, and that's it. I think that's it. And she kind of got stuck with him while he's in in jail. So she's she's ex she's. She's got extreme low self-esteem. Make no mistake, guys. I don't care. Sonya has extreme low self-esteem. That's why he has to prop her up for 20 minutes of every 30-minute phone call. I don't care if he just talked to her. He has got to drop all kinds. And the days that she doesn't get his compliments, you notice he's like, oh, you're low energy today. Is it because I'm not commenting? I'm not complimenting? He says commenting, but I think he means complimenting. On her look, Friend, that, it, that's all he has. It, he that's has all he can her. do. Yeah, it's he just prop her up. He, he has to keep her. Without her, he has nothing. That, he has that, absolutely. Nothing. Yeah, he's got to keep he her in line. Yeah, he has to do everything he can. I love you very much. I love you very much. I love you very much. In his corner, and but if you notice that Sonya is Sonya is getting out there, she's going out to the you know to tab clubs and bars, and she went to Vegas, so she says she's moving. You know, it's not going to take much with somebody. To, if somebody, if she bumps into the right person, I don't know how long, I don't know how much longer Sonya is going to hang around. She I'm going to send you, to, well, not, I'm not going to send, um, how can I, so, can. okay, I can, the link to the Charleston White, uh, it's like 20 minutes. You got to listen to it just from a high level standpoint, not the details, because some of the details are sketchy. To me, because I think he's talking about Sonya and not Shirley. I think he's talking about what he heard in some situations, not necessarily what he saw. Um, right. Any of you guys who watched it may agree with me because those of us who have like studied the case, quote unquote, um, know that some of the things that he said probably are not accurate. So I don't, there were people in the comments saying, oh, you're lying because da, 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 da. I don't expect the victims to know all the details of what happened with all the other victims. That's what I put it like that. I do think that he had some dealings with Erica King because he described Pine Grove Road. And if he'd never been to Pine Grove Road, how is he describing Pine Grove Road? Oh, you, mean and, you mean Charleston White? Charleston White. He yes, said that. I, I, he met yeah. Erica King. I saw, she, I saw that. Okay, I saw she that. seduced him and all of that. Right. I I believe the core of that story that they were trying to get him to do a podcast to be like the next. Uh, not obviously this is Nesto and Erica King. They wanted him to compete with Kevin Samuels. Okay, right. and so they. This go ahead. Sex, this seems to be this mix of sex and money between the two of them. Mm -hmm. Yes, they, they seem to use that very effectively. Yeah, uh, 
although Charles Dwight, it didn't work with him because he cares more about money. And when he couldn't get his money, of course, <laughs> when he didn't get the other half of his money, he quickly saw through it. Um, yeah, he woke up. He he snapped yeah, he out up. of it immediately because she was seducing him with sex. And then when it came to they started using him, they got him a they got him a gig. He earned some money and they paid him a 50 percent fee out of what he earned and uh erica was trying to keep the money and he quickly snapped out of it he was done after that yeah because he's it, it, i don't know what the contract was supposed to be for but i guess it wasn't a 50 50 split and that was that was the end of that i did not know that that much uh i didn't know that it, that much sex play and thing were, was going on that in atlanta like that i, I had no idea it was, uh it was, it was i don't know either I'm all, the, I'm all the way up here in charlotte so i have and no idea but it doesn't surprise me um i'm not surprised i'm surprised that people in in uh and these are older people too these are not these are people hmm. that should know better should i mean better. Yeah. they should know better like they're over 40 and should be conducting themselves in a more decent orderly manner rather than acting like it's college fraternity time yeah. um there's they're a bunch of they're it's it's comical to me i mean honestly i this really could almost be a movie i'm not gonna lie but i don't know it's a movie because of nesto i think it's a movie because of this whole entire shenanigans this let's whole call it, let's call plot it geriatric, is a movie let's, let's call it geriatric <laughs> sex party how about that this is I ridiculous don't, it's, it really is nuts. It's very much nuts. Now, people are asking, and they've asked this before, Joey, do you want to tell, are you in, you You have to be in the legal field. That's what people are saying. They're like, Joey has got to be in the legal field. Uh, it's, <laughs> Joey doesn't want to say. <laughs> I, cannot, I cannot confirm nor deny any of those things. So, okay, so let me ask you this. This is, um, so just to pivot real quick, um, Diddy has Sean Holly as his lawyer from the Dream Team. Do you remember Sean Holly? I the black don't. woman, the light, the light skinned black woman with the curly hair. She was, she was like very young. I mean, okay. obviously, this is 25, 30 years ago, OJ. Okay. Okay, she was on. Real, she was up under Cochran. She was one of his in, kind of. Uh, she was on his. She was one of maybe the associates or whatever. I think, uh, but I, now I, she, I think I remember. Her. Yeah, Sean Holly. She's a LA lawyer. Um, so if you don't remember her, then I guess it's not relevant. I was wondering what your thoughts were on him getting I, I, a Johnny I'm Cochran the, alum as a lawyer uh, okay, to help well, him with this case. Well, I answer. I'll answer your question with another question. I'm 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 following more or less the fan the Fannie Willis case more yes, so than yes. that one. We can talk okay. about that later. Uh, the Diddy, my issue with where there's smoke, there's fire, and yes. when you start pulling in high biz lawyers like that, it, you know there it's eh, the, the, eventually some eventually one of these things is going to stick. There's too much of it out there, and you've got he's got years of this years of this behavior, and I be, and I do believe he was doing this. And I also believe the people that were doing it with them were complicit. But when you start, when there's a chance to make a lot of money by being a victim, don't ever, you know, people don't, I don't put anything past anybody. So um, I, I don't know. I mean, in his latest complaint, the guy says that he spent 13 months working with Diddy and he was supposed to make like twenty, like fifty thousand dollars or something, and Diddy didn't pay him anything. Um, I'm only halfway. The complaint was like seventy eight pages, so mm. we read most of it yesterday. But um, I'm just trying to figure out how he escaped from from the clutches of Sean Combs, and then he got no pay, um, even well, though six of some, the. Part, go ahead. I understand he has some audio. He has some actual physical evidence. Yeah, he's he's got video audio. audio. He said Diddy yeah. really doesn't mind being like he wanted Diddy. Diddy wanted him to record him. Like it wasn't like he was taking secret recordings. It was that Diddy right. wanted him to record him, and also that Diddy and records everything in his house. So he's got 
he's got all kinds of video proof and all kinds of things that like so and so's that's why nobody really he says nobody really talks because anyone who's been to his house or been to his parties you will you're on video somewhere so if you were involving in something that you did not want to be involved in you're you're on video at, at a diddy party I don't know. If, if you're gonna, I guess if you're gonna live like that, then you should pay people what you own. Mm. Uh, it's okay. That's pay the, your that's right. The pay your people because yeah, he's he's pay probably disgruntled after um, all of the shenanigans that he says Diddy basically twisted his arm to uh, um, to be involved in. Okay, so let's pivot real quick since you're not really following that one yet. Um, Fani and Nate. So. I did not get to watch the complete tes testimony yesterday of Terrence Bradley, but um, yes. do you think Terrence Bradley did this to himself, gossiping with Ashley? Because it it seems like there was some good old fashioned courthouse gossip going on, and I don't he know. basically got himself caught out there. Or do you think he was a whistleblower? Was he gossiping, I think he, I, or was I he whistleblowing? He, I believe he was a whistleblower. I think he did this because he and I think he and uh, Nate. I don't think he particularly likes Nate after Nate kicked him out of the law firm. Mm -hmm. So I think he did this on purpose, uh, hoping that he could throw the rock and hide his hands. I don't think, I don't think he thought that they were going to come back and use his words, actually use him as a, as an actual witness. He's the star of the show. Right. I, I think that's, I think he thought he could throw the rock, you know, and, and just kind of, you know, they would Stay investigate in the background. these things. Right, they'd investigate these things, find it out, and then he would kind of not be a part of it, and and they'd say, "How they, you know, why they, you know," but yeah, so he's he's uh he's he's every bit a part of it, but but uh, Fani did this to herself because when you hold an office, any public office. Any office of authority, any office, any level of responsibility like that, you have to avoid not only actual impropriety, but the appearance of impropriety, which you, have to you be did not do. Approach. Right, you have to be above reproach. When you are, when you are, when you, and especially when you are, I know the argument people say, well, I don't see what the big deal is. Uh, you know, it's not nobody's business. Yada yada yada. And I'm like, yeah, you're right. It isn't anybody's business. And if you were in, if you were going to trial, nobody would care. If I was going to trial, uh, Bonnie could have Nate, her boyfriend, sitting in this chair with her. They, nobody would care. But when you're trying to try a former president <laughs> who has a lot of people that support that support him, that are going to feed him information, feed their legal team everything. You, your, you, your skirts have got to be clean. You've got to be clean on that. So, well, and it's also a distraction. Like, let's not let's not forget that the you know that there's certain look a good distraction can pivot an argument. That's just sure. it, and that's all. You know what I mean? So, for a minute, for a moment in time, people use this distraction to take away from the argument at hand, which is the election interference, right? Of, of um, course. Aside from the affair, from like a HR leadership standpoint, I've said my views on that. I think Fani, I like Fani a lot, but Fani did put the city and uh, Fulton County in jeopardy by giving out contracts without proper bidding, having personal relationships with people that she is just throwing contracts at. And we don't know what the bid process is like. We don't know what, you know, she's, she just seemed to be trying to put out fires. But we see that with managers a lot. People will just start handing out contracts or throwing business and not following the protocol of the city or the municipality or the company that happens, but she should have been more aware of what she was doing and that all of this would come back to bite her because on top of all of that, then she's having sex with someone she hired who she was giving contracts to not under the city domain. I mean, I don't I'm quite her, sure they have a purchasing her. program. I don't give her a pass at all. 
she you clearly she clearly knew better than this. And she, yeah, she had to know better. I mean, she, she was a sitting judge. I'm sure she correct. heard cases of this nature. Like you this. Just, you just can't, you cannot. The, the conflict of interest to me, to me, my opinion is clear. You, you just can't, you just, you can't. It's, it, there's a direct conflict of interest in there. And, uh, and then we had, and that's before we even get into the pay. And then the pay disparity is so great that it, it just it just looks horrible. Right. It just it, looks really she good. Needs, the pay the guy three times more than anybody motivated. else. Yeah, it's just really bad. It's just bad. And she didn't give anyone an opportunity to be promoted. And now they're sitting there trying to save his ass. And he's getting paid three prosecutor. times more than them. Well, she needs a special prosecutor, and you need but from what I understand, he's not a criminal attorney. He doesn't really have a background in that, so you can't you can't use that as your excuse. Um, and again, and you have a relationship with the guy. And he's making me. He's making more money, and you're you're taking these trips and you're doing all these wonderful things, which I which again, you know, people in you know people that are dating do. But it's it's too easy to make this. It's too easy for pe for people to make these connections that may or may not be there. Right. And you're and you're a you're in a city that's backlogged and you're on vacation Correct. in Belize and this, that, and the third. Like you're constantly on vacation, you're taking multiple crews, you're smoozing with your boyfriend, but there's people who are who are sleeping in feces overnight. I mean, we get like Correct. it's not it's a horrible look for Fani. Like Fani, the look and the optics of this could not be any worse. So yeah, absolutely. And, and, and she knows. And again, this is a self-inflicted wound. This is all yeah. Doing, she didn't have to do this, itself. right? Didn't have to do it. So none of it. So this is all your own fault. This is all you. And you right. have the advantage of being. You have the. You are in control of the environment. So you you don't have to find yourself in this situation, but you did. And it goes back to and it lends itself to your judgment. So you you know I'm not a fan of her. Her judgment is horrible. If I were her boss. Or her leader, I would have fired her. I would have fired her immediately because it show, you just I, have. I don't this, think she's going to come out of this. Uh, I mean, it's a it, you know, it's unfortunate for her. I think she's going to be okay, but I don't think that she's going to be in her office in Fulton County. Like I don't know, maybe she'll make it to January, um, but I think either whenever her term is over, or she might be unceremoniously ousted. Um, I don't know. I just I don't I see she'll. her. She won't be going very long. I what do you say? I think she'll serve out her term politically. I mean, she's a yeah. official. So she'll get her term out, but it, again, it lit, we are better than this. People are better than this, and you cannot. We we've got to quit. We got to quit playing to the lowest common denominator, and 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 this one was an easy one. And I mean, I can't, I can't, I can't help you. We can't help you if you are going to. Uh, I mean, if you're going to put your, if you're going to put your hands in the bear trap. I can't save you from that. I can't do. There's nothing I can do. So, it it it's I don't know. It's just it's hard for me to watch because uh, it's hard for me to watch a person in 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 that high of office uh, do something so so obviously dumb that uh it, it's just tough for me it, it's it's and i'm sure she worked very hard i know she wants to you know i know she wanted the job i know she worked very hard but uh and and nathan wade's going to i know nathan you know he's gonna he's gonna take a a hit for this as well but and, nathan i think is gonna just go back to his office and he's gonna be fine nathan is not going to have to deal as much he's not an elected official even though he's probably very embarrassed and his wife is going to take him to the cleaners. He's going to have a forensic accountant, accountant in his like in his nostrils. Like they're going to go over every single penny. Um, so it's going to be bad for him. But I think more from a personal standpoint, Fani unfortunately will suffer politically because of this. You know, and I feel bad for her because I really do like her. I don't know why I just like her, um, but. She she messed up. She really did. So I I don't take that away from her, but I do hope that maybe she can come. I think she's smart. She's gonna. I think she's gonna be fine. 
I just think it's it's kind of embarrassing. I felt bad for her on how she manages her money has really been raked over the coals because I don't think there's anything wrong with running around with some cash. I love it, but you know, I for whatever reason people seem to look down on it. But I I've you know, i I like her. I like that she's I like she's feisty. Uh, I, well, again, we we will agree to disagree. I don't. I, <laughs> I like, like her. Okay. I don't. I don't. I like. I like professionalism. I like someone who actually wow can walk, can walk the walk and talk the talk. You you can't. Yes, uh, that they're when, when they're Col- aligned. When, when, when Col- her father was very good in the court. If you watch her father, father was very good. Uh, but when but when pulled into a situation like that, actually has the eyes dotted and the t's crossed. That's what I mm-hmm. like to see. Some, someone that can actually put these people in their place, not, you know, hands on the hips and, and snake charmer head. That doesn't that doesn't help you. That doesn't. That's how you know that you're in the wrong. That you're in the wrong. You, 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 re, you start banging the table. She was giving attitude rather than just answering Correct. the question. So um, Loretta you, said, you OK, Joey. Get it. You're perfect and never made a mistake. You're you're getting you're getting called to task in the chat today, sir. The difference maybe, between maybe money because and I, she got caught. Yeah, she maybe got caught. Because, no, I have made plenty of mistakes, but I've never made I've never made the obvious ones. <laughs> maybe that's it. Okay. So there's a difference. You can make a mistake, but but I've smart but again, there's a there's a saying wisdom versus there's a difference between being wisdom versus versus uh, there's being wise and there's being smart. You know, wise, pe- smart people learn from their mistakes. Wise people learn from other people's mistakes. So Fani has been around long enough to know the political landscape that she is in. You know, you're being. You think wise. she's a, a victim of of uh, like absolute power corrupts absolutely? Do you think she's kind of got into smelling herself too much? I think so. I think people forget when you work in the public sphere, every, especially when you deal with money, every dime is watched. Every dollar is watched. People are watching everything that you do. Mm. And you may think that you have, you, you, you may think that you're in, in, that you're in control of that system, but you're not. You have to play it straight right down the line every day, all the time. As long as you're in that position, and if yeah. you're doing that, th- that's where your that's where your power comes from. The minute you start taking shortcuts, the minute you start, uh, no one's gonna see. The minute you start, well, we will let that one slide. That's that's the road to ruin right there. So I'm not being I don't want to be preachy, but that's my problem with that. You know, these positions are very hard for us to get in for us to get into, us to maintain. If if we want the system to work for us, we got to make it work. And we got to be good in it. You can't, you know, you, uh, having attitude is not going to save you from the letter of the, from, from the from the law. It's not going to do it. No, I I I, I so. get it. I mean, it's not. I'm sure she was not happy about the events of the day that when she had to testify. Shelly, give me two minutes. Let me let Joe's, Joey close out. So, Joey, there's been a lot of activity over these last two three weeks. What do you think is next? I I would love for you to call back in two weeks when Nesto hits the streets. I would love to know what the YouTube streets thinks like, will Nesto be out in March? Cause I mean, he hadn't hit the streets yet. So he's probably trying to crowdsource and fundraise as much as he possibly can. So I guess the next time I, uh, I mean, we're going to see what comes up because we don't know when his next court date is. Um, but the next thing that we should be seeing is Sonia dipping into her bank account, somebody dipping into something to help this man, um bond out because allegedly sir has pockets and he's got funds somewhere and uh so do you you know i guess we're gonna no. we're gonna see how that goes no no he has no funds anywhere he doesn't have he doesn't have a magical bank he doesn't have a magical bank account that he doesn't know that he no one knows doesn't about. have bougie gang bougie gang ain't helping him you know he we doesn't are not have helping that. him Sonya can't go down and take out a loan or whatever, like she said. Sonya has no uh, credit. She just had bankruptcies. No She's like, this is broke. 
I'm she gets afraid 50 in the food stamps. I'm afraid that he is going to be in jail in March right now. He's going to be in the exact same place he's in right now. And uh, and that's the and that's going to be set for him. He's going he's going to stay right mm. there. He's not going anywhere. Well, um, oh well. I, that, that's that's how I see it. I don't think he's going anywhere. He's got this high bond. He's losing. He's he's down to one friend, I guess, which is uh, Sonia. And I wish they would start talking again. I mean, they need to get back to have the phone. I mean, we already know everything now, so just have your phone calls and and just kind of. Well, hopefully phone calls from prison will have some good chats post these last hearings because they have to talk. They have to like they can't not talk uh, because these two love to run their mouth. So I'm sure something is coming because they're they can't not talk to each other. These two are addicted. Uh, But but Joey, let me let me let you go because I've got Shelly waiting behind the scenes. Um, She's waiting to come up. Um, Hopefully in the next week or two, like we'll see some movement and then call hope like this time next week when we do call in, call us back. Sure. Okay. My pleasure. All right, All right, Joey. Take care. Have a good afternoon. Okay. Bye-bye. Okay. All right. Bye-bye. Okay, Shelly. Okay. Hello. Hey, Shelly. Um, Shelly, before you go, one second. Guys, you guys were giving Joey the business in the chat. <laughs> Shelly, were you fired up by by Joey's commentary, or tell me what's got you calling this afternoon? And welcome. Oh, thank you. It was a couple of things, but the last thing was Joey, Uh-oh. and I wanted to agree with you in what you were saying about the funny hearing and that. A lot of that is not right. Things could have been done differently. But what do we know about Trump? Where does he sit in his investigation? It was a distraction. We're not talking about that. He is still potentially in the wrong with everything that he's done. Where does he stand with that? And why is everybody not up in arms about that? So I agree. It was a distraction. It is a distraction. Not that it's 100% right what's happened, what she's done, but it's still a distraction. Because they try to find a way to find you with your pants down. You know what I mean? It's like when someone runs for office and they find out that you paid your taxes late or, again, somebody cheated on their wife. If they can find something to pivot the conversation to discredit you, that's what they're going to do to diminish the argument. It's it's the old discredit to diminish um, or devalue, right? So it's unfortunate, and but that's that's politics 101. I hate Fonnie fell for it because I really yes. do like her. Um, but you know what I mean? Like, it is what it is. Like, sis messed up, and he's separated, technically. Um, it's not like he was running behind the bushes to go cheat on his wife. But, you know, technically he is married, and it's not a good look for a lady who is in the level that she, you know, in at her level period. So yeah, absolutely. That's correct. So I have a question. Um, Nesto's bond. Mm -hmm. Has it been a, is it a 10% bond or is it? Because see, I didn't, I didn't understand it that way. I didn't understand that he had to pay a percentage of his bond. I thought he had to pay the entire amount. So the 405, I thought was the amount. I didn't know that it had been reduced to a percentage. Did he qualify? Uh, for the let percentage? me give you a, the visual, the visual for anyone just coming in. We talked about this. Um, I'm going to show it up. Uh, Cause it's some, maybe some have not seen it. And thank you to everyone who sent super stickers and super chats. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, you guys are awesome. Um, okay. So it says good bond. So basically it's either cash or other good bond. And let me see. Good. I know I've heard surety bonds, but let's say good bond is what, let me, any of my legal folks, please feel free to jump in. Um, but a good bond, um, let me see. Good bond. Uh, what is a good bond in jail? Okay. Many defendants select surety bonds as their preferred bail bond type because bail is often set to a dollar value that exceeds the average 
person's budget since most cannot afford da, 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 da. Um, they turn to bail bonds companies purchase of a surety bond and then pay it back over time. So I don't know if that is what a surety bond is. Seven types of bail bonds. Let me just look at this. Um, there are seven types of bonds. There's surety bonds, property bonds, cash bonds, citation release, release on recognizance, federal bond, immigration bond. Okay. So a surety bond. So they're saying it's either cash or other good bond. So good bond, I'm assuming surety bond is when a bond, bail bondsman co-signs the full amount of the bond with the court. The bail bondsman becomes financially responsible to ensure the defendant appears in court. Okay. Cash bond is when cash is used to pay the full amount. They did not check off sheriff's 10% program. So right. it's either going to be 405 cash or it, I think in Georgia or Atlanta, it's 15% bond. So he would have to come up with 15% of that. But keep in mind, he also has other bonds. So let's just say altogether, it was totaling somewhere about a half a million dollars. It was like 460, 470, uh, right. 470,000 altogether. So if it's a 15% altogether, then he's going to need to come up with around 60 something close to $70,000 uh, to pay a bail bondsman or he needs to pony up the cash. Am I getting this right to any of my folk out here that know, know what they know? You love our chat. I love you guys. Um, does that sound about right to any of my folks out here? So it says cash or other good bonds. So I'm imagining that that's what that is. There's seven types of the seven most common bonds are surety property where Nesto has his fictitious 25 acres. Now there was a sis in the chat that said that there's an Ernest Williams that does have property in Augusta, but we don't know who in the Ernest Williams that is, but it could, it's a possibility. We're not striking it out completely. Um, but there may have been other owners on that property. So we don't even know if that was him. It's not confirmed. Um, cash bond, citation release, release on, uh, so ROR, um, federal bond, immigration, and um, was it the unsecured judicial release? We've seen that as well. Um, does that answer your question? Um, well, does it help? Yeah, it helps, but I need just a little bit more clarity. So, is there ever a uh, bond where cash only is what he has to have? Because if I understood you correctly, even with the cash good bond being selected, he still had the option of only having to have 15% of that. And that's because that's a Georgia um, no. option. No. Okay. okay. So it's cash. So the, the option was cash or good bond. Right. Right. So right. cash is cash. You got to pay cash. Cash right. is a hundred percent. Okay. Or if you want to solicit a good bond, bonds cost and you're basically buying, it's almost like an insurance policy when you buy a bond. Right. Okay. So the fee, so let's just say, let's just use easy yeah, numbers. I got it. You just said, um, I, I so get the, it now. <laughs> yeah. So you're paying for your bond mm -hmm. and you don't get that money back. If you pay your cash, you will mm -hmm. get your cash back or your family will get the cash back when you finish the process, whether you're innocent or guilty. It just makes sure that you're going to be back. It gives, it incentivizes the, it incentivizes the people who are responsible for you to deliver you to court on time. Mm -hmm. Make sure that you come to all of your, um, all of the, uh, through the whole entire process because you have a very severe financial stake imposed on people don't want to lose their house and all of those things. Right. So, right. but yeah, the 15% is uh, basically a payment that you will never see back. And I right. guess if he skips town, the people are also going to be financially, there's going to be some other responsibility, I think, or the bail bondsmen become financially responsible. And that's why they have those bounty hunters and things like that, right. because now they have to pay the city that large amount of money. Um, but yeah, that's what they gave him on this one. Now, uh, for instance, um, 
I think Judge Manning on the one on the uh, on the cases that Judge Manning uh, gave him bonds on already. I think mm -hmm. he's got surety bonds on those as well. So, yes. yeah. Mm -hmm. So he's got yeah, but he has the option for cash on this one or a good bond. So, mm -hmm. and then ankle monitors across the board. Okay. 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 Now I understand. I was it it, it scared me to think that he could potentially raise 65,000, but I knew he wouldn't be able to get 405, but obviously that 65 is a problem as well. I mean, 65 so. is definitely doable in 2024 just because mm -hmm. of crowdsourcing and things of that nature. There could mm -hmm. be a support system out here. You know, the, uh, there's, there is a cult, you know, there is, uh, how can I say this in a, you know, in a way, you know, there, there are men out here that support men that they feel like have been done wrong. I'm gonna say it right. like that. And, and there, but I don't know that Sonia has been able to mobilize that sector, um, in an effective way to loosen up those coins to send in Nesto's direction. I don't think all she's been able to do is to rally the women that are like, you know, she, all she's been able to do is to be able to mobilize people that don't, that aren't going to come to his aid. Um, she, she didn't identify her target well to, uh, to be able to help Nesto. So she, she's been basically in theory, barking up the wrong tree. And now that there's time, now that he has the bonds, she can't mobilize the appropriate sector of folk that will see. I am trying to say this very professional, but funny. <laughs> she hasn't mobilized the right group. I mean, I think that he probably could have got out because there are people mm -hmm. out here that would have put some coins together for him possibly. Mm -hmm. But she doesn't, she, she's too dumb. She's mm -hmm. too dumb and didn't know what to do with what she had available. And now it's, it's, it's for not because, um, even the Charleston white, um, you know, reading those comments and that's kind of very heavily like a man sector, uh, some of the say cheese and, even though the age group I think is a little bit off, there's been a little bit of talk around this topic and there's people that can't stand Charleston white. Okay. Mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. I don't, I haven't seen her do one effective podcast to get herself any type of support to even send her a hundred dollars. I just, right. I, I don't think you have, I, I think Nesto is cooked just to right. be honest. I really do. <laughs> I mean, unless he has his own $65,000, I, I don't see where he's going to get any money from unless surely just in the midnight hour, has some pity on him and leverages some of her resources to get him out. But I don't see her doing that either. I just don't. Six months ago, I would have been like, girl, she going to get him out in the midnight hour. Now I don't. After all of hearing him and Sonya talk and calling her daughter one too many bitches and mm -hmm. Uh, all of the things she would, she, I think she would almost be putting her career on the, on the line, um, uh, yeah. dealing with him. I, I really mm -hmm. do. People would not have any, re cause she, he's just, uh, he's done too much. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Another question. This is irrelevant now since Shirley say that she did not sign the form that said he could come live with her. But where is that um, form? I've been trying to find it because there was some wording in that form that I found questionable too, but I can't find it anywhere. Do you have that? I do. We have, I've shown it on so many occasions. Let me, let you me, have, let me pull I've, it up. <laughs> Shelly, I'm going to need for you to get into that playlist and start from the, have you been around I here did. long? Are you new here, I, sis? I, no. No, I've gone. I've gone through the playlist. I've gone through the playlist. I've tried okay. to pick it out. I'm up to date. I just cannot find that particular one. Okay. It. Um. Hold on one second. Let me see if I can. I know I have it on because I. I feel like I show it at least once a week. But hold on. Oh, you do. No problem. Well, yeah, I tell you what. We, I tell you what. It though, comes up a lot. My my. I don't know whether it's my iPhone or whatever. Whenever you go live, this is the first live. I've been able to get on really without a glitch without a glitch what? in two weeks. It'll start and then it'll go back to the very beginning. And then I'll bring it back up to date. And then it'll go back to the beginning. 
and it just keeps messing mm. up. So this is the very first live that I've been in for two weeks. Oh, well, I'm number one, I'm glad you came. And don't worry, you know what I mean? Like, I don't mind, you know, I don't mind showing anything. Um, I try to keep some of these things on deck so that I can pop them up and out as quickly as possible. Um, mm -hmm. I do, so I, look, this is what I think about the affidavit is what you're referring to. I yes. think that surely, look, I, this is what I know, this is what I'm, how can I say this? Because I don't know Crea Lewis from a hole in the wall. But what I do know is that lawyers work very hard to be able to practice. And it is a career. It's not just something you fall up into. And I would find it hard to believe that somebody would jeopardize their profession for this ragtag group of numbskulls. And mm -hmm. I'm talking specific to Nesto. Obviously not Shirley. Shirley is... You know, Shirley is a well-accomplished broadcaster, all of the things. Yes, she's made some mistakes and all of that. But I don't believe that any lawyer who has a license would do something so stupid for these people. Um, I think that Nesto and Shirley speak a very specific way. And mm -hmm. also, I think she knows who she's dealing with. And when he says something and it's not quite right, she will correct him. Like when they say, oh, you said you were going to do this. No, I said I was going to do that, but I didn't do it yet. Mm -hmm. I just did it yesterday. Have mm -hmm. you noticed how they really are very meticulous about correcting each other about yes. their movements and things mm -hmm. like that? So when he said you put in that document, she's like, I didn't put in any document. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. She didn't say I didn't sign a document. Right. She said she didn't put in any because she didn't put in it. The the lawyer put in the document. <laughs> I mean, Krell Lewis really could lose his license. He could. This is you see what's going on with Terrence Bradley right now. You see what's going on with Fani and Nate. I mm -hmm. mean, not that it would be to this level, but lawyers submitting fake documents. And I, I just don't see it. But Look, anything's possible these days, okay? Um, let's look at this real quick, guys. Um, assist requested, so here we go. We're going to oblige um, our good sis. This was entered into the court two... So this past two weeks, phone calls from prison has put up several calls during this time period of June 28th, June 27th. This is June 26th. This was the day of the bail hearing. Did you happen to see the video last week? We revisited that bail hearing. I did. Okay. In that I may have showed this, but maybe not, but this goes along with it. So I'm glad this is coming up on June 26, when Crail Lewis references that he has a letter that was written by Nesto's wife. This mm -hmm. is the letter that was entered. Mm -hmm. Now, maybe he, put the verbiage together because I think she did state that there was a letter he was working on and she wanted to correct a few things. Um, but as far as entering it into the court, she wouldn't have entered it. It would have been him to do that because he's the officer of the court and he was addressing the court that day and submitted it to judge Manning. Um, mm -hmm. So this is page one, basically it's stating st state of Georgia versus Ernest Levert. Williams case number 22 SC 184402, which has now since been dismissed. Um, this was the case that was dismissed. These were the CP pictures. Um, the affidavit of Shirley Strawberry personally appeared before the undersigned officer duly authorized by law to administer oaths came Shirley Strawberry, who, after being duly sworn and deposed, states as follows. My name is Shirley Strawberry. I am over 21 years of age and reside in Fulton County, Georgia. The facts in this declaration are based upon my own personal knowledge. I am the wife of the defendant. That's what she's stating on a legal document. My husband is listed. My husband is listed defendant in case 22 SC 184402 before Fulton Superior Court. That's number three. Number four, I have been told that in one or more of the cases pending before the court, I have been identified as either a victim or of his or witness to a purported criminal act of his to which I respond, I am neither. 
Number five, it is my intention that the court once the, it is my intent that the court know once and for all that I am not afraid of my husband, that I wish for him to be released with no conditions as regards me, that I wish for him to be able to reside with me or wherever he elects to reside and that his release be effectuated immediately. It is further my declaration that I have never made known to anyone at any time prior or since his arrest any desire contrary to that which is contained in this affidavit. And if contrary understanding has been previously conveyed to this court or any other, they have been deceived. I have not I have not been threatened, coerced, or nor harassed in any way by any person to cause me to issue this declaration. So say I, Shirley Strawberry, and it's signed by the notary on the day, June 24th, 2023. And it was admitted um, and stamped in as a legal document into, um, into the case on June 26, 2023. Okay. Okay. I hope Shirley is getting tested regularly due to nasty Nesto shenanigans. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Well, you know what? She would be smart to do that because that is that is it you're never too old to be uh uh in that situation with uh these STIs and STDs, unfortunately. So Nesto has been around. Um what was your question about the affidavit? Was there, some, you said there was something about the wording that was off to you? Well, when I heard it, I was listening to it and I wasn't, didn't see it, but I, you got it in the very first beginning. The I am over 21. Mm -hmm. I thought it said that the person was under 21. And that's oh, when no. we were talking about whether Shirley actually this was in the very, very, very beginning when we, when, we, when there was a discussion as to whether Shirley actually did it. And I was saying, well, if the person is saying they were under 21, then there would be no way that it could be her. That was why I was trying to actually find it myself. Mm, got and read, it. Okay. But it's the over 21. So everything, I understand everything else about that. Okay. I understand everything else about that. So what else mm -hmm. do you think about what's going on? Is this just a nightmare? Is this nightmarish to you? I know that this is this would be a the things that nightmares are made of for a lot of people. Um, this this is just awful. Um, I really I do feel bad for Sheridan. I think Sheridan probably um, had to deal with some of the worst of it because I would I would be terrified for my mom if this was my mother and she had a weirdo husband um yes i think it's a nightmare and <clears throat> i was afraid that dre was going to talk some sense into nesto and get him to get rid of sonia and actually work hard at gaining regaining Shirley's trust and that would have been the worst thing that could have happened to her because she doesn't need that and he was saying well do you love her what are you going to do about your wife it, mm -hmm. I thought he was going to actually talk him into some sense and I'm glad he couldn't talk him into any because the last thing Shirley needs is Nesto because he's not good for her well he's not good for anybody but he would mm -hmm. not be good for her. And I think that he would ruin her the fifth time around. Cause what, this is the fourth time he's been uh, arrested and he's going to do something again. So it would be the fifth time. And I think that would just totally, totally ruin her. So yeah, I'm glad, I'm glad that Avenue got closed with my fingers crossed that he's saying that it's over. But you know, he's never said it's over for me. Truly, what he's always no, said, no. He's he's always yeah. You're said, right. It's over mm -hmm. for her. She's through with that. She's through with that. But I've never heard him say, you know what? I'm not dealing with her 
her anymore. I'm done with that. I'm going to go my own way. Um, you know, I don't think I've ever heard him truly say that. It's all been in her, which means, and then, and which means if he has the opportunity, if that door ever opens, he's going to go through that door. He's going to go through that door. He's not through, he's not through with Shirley. He just believes that she. Go ahead. I'm sorry. You know, I, I drop the coins when the coins come through. So anything. my bad. Mm -hmm. I oh, think no I so to your point, Shelly, I, I, I agree. Nesto is never Nesto states that everyone always leaves him. He never leaves anybody. Nesto is a low key victim and he is the type of person that he's going to always sit, make it not his fault because he truly is. I think he is a bad guy. And I do think that him making it the lady's fault, them walking away, them not seeing his value, them underestimating him, all of those things make him feel like less of a bad guy because they walk away. Right. So, yeah, exactly. I, I agree with you. So do you have anything else for us today? Any other closing points? I'm waiting on the next calls after the final, yes. uh, after the final bail. And uh, I want to know what they're talking about. I want to know, I want to hear that phone call that Dre gets after I want to hear anything from February. Shelly, hun, your phone cut out, sis. I can't hear you, hun. Yeah, Shelly, I'm going to drop you back down. I'll come back to you in just a minute. We'll see if you can, if you're. But that's long. Okay, Shelly, I think we lost you, hun. Something's wrong with your phone. Um, Erica, hi, Erica. Hi. Hi, Erica. Hi. And then Aaliyah TV, I got you next, okay, sis? Shelly, if you can get back connected, I'll I'll send you back up, okay? Erica, go ahead, hun. Hi. Okay, so I wanted to say um, about Nesto, like, he's clearly uh, a womanizer. Uh, he uses women. Um, to kind of get get what he wants uh he's a uh, a little less with men like he's not as manipulative uh, as manipulative as he is with men um the men kind of hold him to the fire even Dion at, at at one point held him to the fire so he, he doesn't use the same tactic um uh, but uh he does seem to be a womanizer um, Shirley was a victim and I think she was aloof. Shirley was aloof. Like she was aloof. I'm not going to say she was, um, not paying attention to her finances or anything like that. Um, I can say like, she's almost 70, 69, 70. Um, I can say with my grandma, okay, she doesn't know how to do a lot of stuff. Okay. Um, and so, um, I can see Shirley as like, you know, like the grandma figure and just, all right, he's my man, he's my husband, and let just let him handle the finances. Um, but she seems like she seemed aloof in a lot of um, the beginning calls. I think the calls we started are going to start to change. Uh, we'll get less, less information from the calls uh, because he knows he's being recorded and he knows it's affecting him. And people know they're being recorded when they talk to him. So they're going to say less. So I think we'll start to get less and less as as the months, like the month of February. I, you know, let's see what who who's dumb enough to, you know, say hmm. uh, something on the call. So I think the calls are going to uh, be less and less productive. Um, we may get something from Sonya and him still um, with their normal banter because they don't see uh, the concern with it. But I think everybody else will see the concern. So I think the calls, um, if, if we get any calls from February, 
especially March, uh, is yeah, it's, it's. I mean, March really and truly, he's got a bond. I mean, he should be cashing out. Right, look, if everything that he said, all this big talking from the two of them, they he should be cashing out right now. Like, what? My question is, why are what are y'all waiting on? All this big talk, all of Sonya and her $45,000 loan officer, I'm assuming we're not going to have any calls in March. There should be not one call for March other than whatever phone calls from prison out of the, the hundreds of calls that are still available and throwbacks and all of those things. I mean, all these big talkers and all these people who got money, money in storages, money land in Augusta and uh, duffel bags and this, that, and the third. I'm assuming he, sir, will be cashing out. Right. We shouldn't so have think, any calls in March. I think you're, I mean, I think we're on the same page. I'm uh, waiting the for there to not be any calls. I want to see the rest yeah, of the, the on the streets. Yeah, the calls are going to run out. So uh, <laughs> I think you're right. So March, yeah, you know, if he's I mean, not I'm going to be in, honest, he's not getting out, but he should be out based on all his talking. That's That's what I mean. Yeah, I think he's. But I think he's going to take the plea deal and 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 what rather no, than no, he's not. Someone... But he's not indicted, sis. There's no plea deal. There, right, you have right. To be well, in, yeah, he he's not indicted. It, he sp he spoke of the plea deal in one call. He said that he they said didn't. if they offer him a plea deal, he wouldn't take anything more than a misdemeanor. But there's no, they haven't offered him anything because he hasn't been indicted. But there was another call where he said he would take a plea deal, but they did not take off um, or say they wouldn't bring um, up the SA charge. So he wanted the SA charge to be, y'all can't bring this up later. And, and I don't know which call it was. It was, uh, it wasn't. It was, uh, he mentioned when he was reading the letter to Crail Lewis, he mentioned in the letter to Crail Lewis that he would consider taking a plea, but he has to be indicted. He has to be indicted. He's okay. not indicted yet. So there's no there's no plea to take if you hadn't been indicted. And so what do you think? Uh, my question to you is, what do you think? And is this not change the subject uh, about the Fannie Will Willis thing? I don't know if you've been watching it, um, but we know at one point Nesto was talking about the B.C. Choper or whatever mm -hmm. his name is, the attorney. And we know that was Mr. Bradley's attorney. Um, so my thinking, so I'm thinking, well, does any of this co uh, does any of this like, uh, collide with him being able to talk to Nesto? Cause we know Nesto was complaining about, oh, he said he's busy and blah, blah, blah. So, I mean, what like, was he dealing with the Fannie Willis stuff? And then I think Fannie Willis, I think, um, with, with her whole situation, I think it's bad. I think she's going to have to uh, like resign her position. She's going to lose her like um, she's not going to lose her. I'm not going to say I'm not saying she's going to lose her license. She's just going to like her uh, credibility is I think it's kind of toast right now. It, it's just mm. toasted. And so we know. But she had the well, uh, the Bradley guy had the same attorney as uh Nesto, at one point, Nesto had the same attorney. They had the same attorney. And so um, that's the connection there. Uh, but again, with the Fannie Willis thing, she's got the ethics. She's got to face the ethics board um, a couple in, in a couple of days. She's got to face um, Congress now for misuse of government funds. Um, she's just like her, her career is in shambles. And I listened to, I listened, I watched the hearing on the lead attorney. I don't know if you watched it, uh, but I, I watched you know, it. I'm going to be honest. I don't like the lead attorney. I think the lead attorney is very disrespectful. I think he is part of the manosphere that I, I just, yeah. I don't know it. I'm yeah, not I, into it. Like, I, I felt I, that too. I felt that too. I and like I knew. He comes I knew off he as one of these guys who doesn't do his homework. He comes off as like the jock in school that doesn't do his homework and tries to steal everybody's homework. I don't, I'm not into it. And so, but initially with the lead attorney, I thought the same thing. 
I was like, well, you know, he, he got, I, I knew he had this thing for women. He was always coming in about women. Like He's very was, rude. Yeah, he, he's rude. And he used the word, uh, he used this word, and he says it's in a dictionary. He drops Nigger the F-bomb too much. He's got that girl on the panel with him right now, and I think he talks way too reckless for a woman to be seated next to him. But because... She might be thirsty, I don't know, for some clout yeah. off of his channel. She's okay with seeming cool about him being disrespectful, talking disrespectfully and having a woman on his panel. So she's okay with that. That's her business. I don't, I, I just, I've tried a couple times to watch, um, especially when I felt like maybe something was interesting, but I don't know. I'm, I'm going back to Shanquilla Robinson. I'm just not impressed. I mean, he can do what he wants. Yeah. He's got his fan base, and that's his business. But I don't really frequent his channel. Tough to watch, but I manage, and I'm dark skinned. And you have to be on panel. You have to be on camera to. And I talk better off camera. I can be on camera with you, but I talk better off camera. But um, he managed to, you know, fifteen thousand people. How many of People who was online watching. I mean, he managed to pick me, so that means that I, you know, I guess he's. So what him. happened? Um. So basically, I made my point, and um, I had a lot of uh, technical issues at first. Made my point. Um, he says very good point. Um, but my thing and what I wanted to say to him, because he has this thing where he talks about. Um, he always focuses on talks about he don't focus on it, but he talks about black, white, nigger, he's a colorist, it's okay. Yeah, yeah. he's colorist. a colorist, exactly, yeah. exactly. He's all right. so I'm, yeah. a dark -skinned, uh -huh. I'm a dark skinned, I'm a dark skinned girl, and so, uh, I you know, I will, you know, I was like, well, I don't did he say something to you, uh, no, when you were on his panel? Okay, he did. He made, he, I made a very good point. He told me I made a very good point that he hadn't thought about. Both of them agreed with it. And, you know, it was a very good point. But my point, what I want to say in that is everybody thought Fanny Willis, the bright skinned lady. And there's nothing wrong with bright skin, but we okay, know. Keep going. Don't make any excuses. Go ahead. Like, get to, we, I don't, don't want to rush know, you, but it's okay. You don't have to make any excuses here. Um, Fonnie Willis, what? Uh, Fonnie Willis, uh, and she's a light skinned and this is this is the one of the things I wanted to say, but I didn't say. But she's light skinned and this is what it boils down to at the end of the day. She's light skinned and I don't think it boils down to this. But for him, for his, for how he holds his conversation, she's light skinned Letitia James, uh, the New York Attorney General, she's dark skinned All right, she took down Trump. She took. She took him down. One, two, three. He was out of there. It was not one scandal. Was not one nothing. She went live every day after the trial. It wasn't nothing. Trump couldn't find nothing on her. But here we are with Fannie Lewis, Fannie Willis, and she's, you know, clearly she's, she's her own, She's yeah. She's not Letitia Jane. Like she's 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 funny. Right. Yeah, she but she clearly per perjured herself. They perjured themselves. If I was look, on the jury, sis, they're look, they perjured. They up. lied. Sis messed up. She knows yeah. it. She knows and it. I think she's going to have to resign as a DA. It's possible. They'll I, they'll have to impeach her. That's number one. Um, but number two, um, you know, she might have to. She, I think she knows. Look, I don't think that there's any. Fonny's fifty two. She's not. She's not. I, I think she's well aware she messed up. And she's been called out for messing up. This is a high point of her career, and it's also a low point of her career. And I think she's well aware that she is, things could be going so much better. And I think she may even be a little mad at herself. I th I got a, 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 a touch of, she's probably a little pissed off at herself for allowing herself for to be put in such a position. But I'm sure 2020s hindsight, she's, I, you know what I mean? She's she's a smart lady. Um, but okay, so what else? And the the lead attorney, you think it's a it's a it's a light skin versus dark skin thing? Because we don't, you know what I mean? Like we can't. Uh, number one, we shouldn't allow men to let us get into these rivalries. And both of these women are well accomplished, but 
I, I don't know. I don't know where you're going with this, but I really try. You know, we're not colorist around here, and I I just don't like to get into this this type of. I don't like to get into that, but yeah, we don't have to get into that. Uh, can I just play, can I if you if you don't mind, can I play uh my I'll just play. Can I just yeah, and that, it'll be you know what lead attorney you could. I don't know what the lead attorney um, allows as far as fair use, and I'm not trying to get involved in that. Um, what you can do is if you want to comment when this is over, just drop the timestamp and we'll go look at his video. We'll give him a view, whoever wants to, and they can go check it out. Okay. Okay. And so, but, but, but this, my last comment, my last okay. comment, and my last question this is the last question to you and everybody else is um, do we think um, the voters in Georgia? Um, have been basically cheated by uh, this whole Fannie Willis saga because I think the judge is going to transfer the case. You mean but by Fannie Willis? You like yes, you mean did they have Fonny been cheated Willis. by her or by by, by the election by interference of Donald Trump? Because that's not her fault. If well, the if the election was uh if if in fact the allegations against the Trump election the uh, the election that mr trump actually interfered with the election that's not her that would be the trump campaign Let's but it is clear. the problem is um uh, if she is disqualified it's going to go to another county okay georgia is mostly red so we may get a red county that takes over the case and the red county the mostly red county the the county well, that mostly let, voted for let, trump let, may the Let's let do. Let's let the uh, process happen before we start to like, because we don't know where it'll go. We don't know what's going to happen, and then based on what's going to happen, where in fact this particular case could be moved to, it it could be that they find that she's impeached from the case and she doesn't get to sit for the case anymore. It doesn't mean that the case is going to leave Fulton County. If no, they no. find that that Nate and uh, Fani have to recuse themselves from the case. It doesn't necessarily mean that it's leaving Fulton County. No, it does. If she's disqualified, it, it cannot happen in Fulton County. It has to go to another case. It has to go to another county. If she is disqualified, okay. it has to happen. And that's the seriousness um, and the nature. But all right, I'm going to let you go, Fanny. Thank you for taking. I mean, I, I oh, didn't mean absolutely. you. Thank no, it's thank okay. you for taking my call, though. Thank you okay. for taking my call. Take care. I appreciate it. You too. Bye. Take care. Bye bye. Aaliyah. Yeah. Hey, Fran, can you hear me? Okay. I can. Okay. Hey, Fran. So <laughs> today's show has been so funny and really Girl. informative. <laughs> uh, so, okay. Uh, one thing I did notice earlier in the stream when you were showing the bond sheet stuff you, you yes. recently got, um, where it has, where he, he can't be in contact with these people. So I have a question about that because this sheet, it's only specific to the, the actual crimes, right? So the people on the, on the bottom there, I'm guessing they're saying these are his like potential victims. And I know when we read the warrant, we heard about the, the one younger person um, that, you know, we, we, we're not supposed to like engage with, but so are they basically um alleging that that Sheridan has some type of like actual allegations against him is 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 that why her name is on that I don't think so I think that cuz uh Scratchin is on there too I don't know you know what I mean I'm going to be honest I don't know I don't mm -hmm. think so look mm -hmm. I it's hard for me I'm just going to be honest even though I'm I have a big age um to wrap my head around that um i'm not i'm thinking nothing happened with him and sheridan but i mean mm -hmm. god only knows um i'm gonna just assume no because how could Shirley still be in contact with someone like that mm -hmm. um if in fact there was any truth to that assertion because that's been said now that doesn't necessarily mean it's true just because it's been said but it's been said I don't know. I don't think it's true, but I, I don't know. I mean, okay. I think that she doesn't like him. I think that um, he has wronged her mom. Just just on the fact of 
they used her name and she did not authorize that. So she's been identity thefted um, on the fact that he's called her bitch one too many times. He isolated her from her mother. He may have been responsible for further exacerbating the issues with her and her mother. I just think that when they interviewed her, maybe her name across the board is like, just leave, like, leave her out of it. And he is not to contact her at all. Um, so I don't really know what that's grounded in. Was she one of the outcry statements? I don't know. Like, has he threatened her? He seems to have a lot of strong sentiment against her, which I hope that he hadn't violated her. But I'm going to be honest. I know what you guys know. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I don't know. I, I only know what you guys know. I would hope that uh, he had not. But, you know, he's not a good guy. He's just not, you know? Yeah. Yeah, I, I mean, I'm hoping he didn't do anything to her, mm -hmm. but when, but her name being on there, and then I think you said Melody is on there, but I didn't see Gail's name, so I'm like, okay, so did is Melody also thinking he did something to her, like, like or like she felt pressured, she had to do this in order for him to help her. So that's how Possibly. I was looking at it. Yeah, because it because I know Sheridan had the identity stuff, but those cases are uh from the other judge, so. You know, that's right. where the, I was the like... The financial, the financial uh, uh, crimes, right? So, yeah. yes, to your point, when you look at the bonding sheet, uh, the different bonding sheets and all the names, there are names that cross over from both sets of crimes or sets of cases that, that I've seen. You know, it's funny that you mentioned that because I was looking for... See, normally I could look at this stuff on Fulton County and it's, uh, yeah, it's Aaliyah TV who's calling in, guys. Um, normally I can go right into Fulton County and pull up whatever I want. And I was working on that project when the damn system got hacked. I was, you know, because I've got my little notebook and I was, I was getting all the cases together. So, you know, because sometimes when we're talking or we're doing a live, it's really helpful to be able to quickly, like on my fingertips, pull, you know, get my little notebook, right? My little binder mm -hmm. versus, you know, typing in and trying to find it. Cause right now, Fulton County is, it's done. Like, I don't even know when it's coming back. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. I got the document today, but I had to request it. Normally, I could just log in and pull something like that, no problem. So, um, I, I don't, I need to compare notes. That's my point. I need to compare notes of the other bonding orders. Mm -hmm. So, um, I'm not sure, but I think that there was some crossover in the orders because okay. I've seen yeah. names crossover. Now, Gail's was not there. Um, that Olivia Washington was not there. Erica King was not on there. Mm -hmm. Um, maybe they felt like those names weren't as relevant. So that's a very good observation. Like why is Sheridan's name still on there? If she doesn't necessarily have anything to do with that, but could she have information? Could oh. she have seen something? Mm -hmm. Could she have met that person? I don't, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, I like don't know. Mm -hmm. Yeah. She could be, she may have, you know what I mean? Like, I'm sure there's a time where she could have heard conversation. Like we don't really don't know. So I'm just, I'm just throwing stuff out here. She could have heard conversation. She she might know something. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know. So we don't yeah, know. So, so that so that was my my thoughts on that or my questions on that one. And then uh, really quick on the Fanny situation. So mm -hmm. so Nate's partner they called him back to the stand. Is is Girl, that what yes. I walked into? Oh yes. wow! Oh, yes, yes. We we can watch it. Um, <laughs> He, ooh, you know what I mean? I don't think it, to me, it kind of felt like it started out as him. I don't know why he ran and told Ashley what he told her, but he messaged, he was messaging Ashley um, or Ashley messaged him and said something like, could they really be that stupid? And he fell for it, hook, line and sinker and started running his ex uh, partner's information. And now he's sitting on stand, you know, day two testifying regarding what he knows um, personally versus professionally, what is covered under professional courtesy or professional privilege 
versus just general knowledge. And I have not seen the whole thing, but they said that Trump's lawyer, the older guy, because, you know, that whole team over there represents many of the defendants in the election interference. So oh, yeah. Ashley represents the guy Roman, but that really kind of nasty older white guy, the one who everyone says, you don't need to yell at me, sir. That guy, oh, yeah. um, he, they said he grilled Terrence Bradley. So I'm going to watch it a little bit later. I was thinking, I didn't know if you guys wanted to watch it or not. Uh, I think it went on for like two and a half hours. I was going to watch it and just come back with like a synopsis of my thoughts on it. But if you guys want to watch it, we can watch it later. Um, and I'll just put it on and let it run and we can just, and you know, I, I don't want to stop it every five minutes, but I just want to like, you know, I just want to watch like, you know, more of like a watch party or whatever. Um, and, and get into it. What's the chat going on in this? Oh, okay. Anyway. Um, but yeah, yeah. that yes, to your, to your question. Yes, they did interrogate. Well, not interrogate. They <laughs> did, um, have him back on the witness stand. And I guess they did interrogate him sort of. Yeah. For two and a half hours. Mm-hmm. Okay, well, yeah, that's that's everything I wanted to talk about, Fran. So I'll I'll go back in the chat. Okay, well, thank you so much, Aaliyah. You're welcome. Okay, bye. take care. All right. Thank okay, bye bye. Guys, today's calls were quite interesting. We can't watch it. To, we can watch it together. Okay, Rhonda. Um. Okay. Um. Guys, what an interesting almost three hours. My goodness, never a dull moment. Um, I know you guys, uh, to add the legal system has, has to have checks and balances. The way we've dragged this out is unethical and is costing the taxpayers money. It is not about Nesto. However, we can't sit back and allow injustice. I think I also don't know that this is just a Nesto thing. I think this is just, this might just be how Atlanta look at the end of the day. If this is how Fulton County works, then it's not a Nest. Nesto is not getting any special treatment or lack thereof just because now it's funny to say well maybe he pissed somebody off that's true we don't know if he's getting if that's happening for that reason or not or that's just how fulton county like you know we're gonna get to it when we get to it slow justice i don't know i wonder what will come out in march i'm look this is what i say these people been talking that they got so much damn money. What I want to see in March is Nesto pimp walking his behind up out that jail on his bond since he seems to think that he's got enough money to do that. And Sonia seems to think that she can get a $40,000 loan. But I think what's going to happen is going to happen is that he's going to still be sitting there. Um, there's someone who's trying to call in. If you want to hurry and try and call back, you're welcome to. Otherwise, I think we're going to try and shut this thing down because this has almost been uh, Fulton County website is yeah down. Nesto could be out and we wouldn't even know it. You're right. Um, I think, you know what? I think we would know it because Sonia would go live. I do. I just, Sonia, he might not be on live, but I think he would, I think he would be live and I think we would hear something about it. Someone's trying to call in. Let's, let's give him a shot. Is it Jalea? Yes. Hi. Can you hear me? Hi. How are you? Hi, I'm fine. I do apologize because this is going to be off topic, but okay. I just want to know, are you going to cover the Nature Boy case? I don't know. You know, Nature Boy is so like just the content is very um, weird. Yeah, it's weird. And I, not to not to be disrespectful to anybody who enjoy, who watches over there. Mm -hmm. Some of that you know, when you start to do content on cert with certain sectors and then people come to the chat because we're live, I don't yes. even want to cross pollinate that into okay. here. You know what I'm saying? Yes. I, I, I'm I, kind I, of, a, I've got a respect for the YouTube streets and I know yes. how this thing works and I don't want to inject that into this because I feel like we have a very nice community and I can't stop people from coming in. Yes. I can just control what can potentially come in by not steering the content a certain way. And I would be very leery of that because no. those people are different. 
Yes, and I, I do respect you for that. I stopped watching them a long time ago, but I just noticed as of yesterday, I did see another channel that was, you know, and I watch you constantly every oh, day. Oh, thank you. Every thank day. You. I, I'm so happy I found your channel. So, oh, um, but you. I was just, I was, I was just wondering um, if you was covering that. No. If not, I, I respect you all the same. Um, I'm not into that anymore watching them but i saw that yesterday come on my into my notifications so i now, just wanted to ask but i do respect you yeah no i appreciate that and i i think look there's a way to cover it without getting like all up into it i do like yes. to watch the cases i like to watch court if there's something compelling that happens um but i mean we can keep up on it from a standpoint of this happened that happened I just don't want to get too far down the rabbit hole in it because it invites um, it invites some discourse that I'm not really into. I just think that some of what he did to, I mean, it's not even almost worth debating because sure. it's really unfortunate that some of the women got involved in what he's doing. I think he's, he's just a very low type, low energy type of a man. Yeah. And um, I, don't, I don't even know if it fits. I mean, I think from just a standpoint of like, can you believe that happened um, type of standpoint, but I just don't see this collective of women even being interested or falling victim, you know, and for, you know what I mean? Like I just, True. You know, they're crazy. That man's crazy. Yes. Yes. Well, I, do highly, I highly, like I said, I highly respect um, you, your channel, everyone that's following. I became a follower maybe a month ago and I'm so happy that I found it. Oh, well, and, welcome, uh, I'm, welcome, I'm welcome. addicted to your channel, to be honest. And I, I oh, really, really, you're so sweet. yes, you, you seem, you so, you have so much class. So oh, I, I just like the way you, you know, you speak and everything and give your opinions and state facts and things like that. And I enjoy it. And I do enjoy your channel a lot. So I'm sorry that I'm rambling, but I'm nervous. But oh, um, you're fine. <laughs> but I just want to let you know, I do highly respect you. And um, I'm going to drop off and continue listening to you. But I hope you have a great day. Okay. Okay. Thank All right. Well, thank, thank you. you so much. Okay. Thank you. All right. Take care. Bye bye. Yeah, I think I think Nature Boy is an interesting case. I just I'm not, you know what I mean? Like I'm interested in real housewives and stuff like that. I mean, everybody has their interest in cases that they want to follow, and that's cool. You know what I mean? And I think that there'll be crossover in some places and there won't be crossover in other places, and that is okay. You know what I mean? There's nothing wrong with that. I just I think that like I did watch some coverage on it yesterday, and I think that man kind of scares me almost a little bit. I'm just not interested. In it. Nesto is about as far down the rabbit hole as I want to. Not to mention, there's just some people that um, there's some sectors. Let's just talk about it from a YouTube perspective. There's some sectors when you talk about certain things, people want to come knock on your door. And I'm going to just leave that right there. I'm just not interested in that nature boy uh, situation um, is very much weird and I'm not with that knock on your door, take it out the computer type stuff. So I, I respect that there's a certain element on these YouTubes that is very much weird and I'm gonna leave it right where it where its weird self wants to be. You know what I'm saying? Because I don't, we don't, we don't do all that over. You know, we like to have a good time in Kiki and keep it real cute and talk about the law as it pertains to us lay folk over here trying to understand what's going on and get the tea and everything. That's it. You know what I'm saying? That's that's it. You know, we like to keep it very cute. That's it. Uh, I'm surprised there's still people who. Like, uh, can is it called if that's what it was called? Yeah, I don't even know anything about it. it says, Oh, carb cabin nation. Um, I watched Nature Boy for a few years ago, and after a few days of going down the rabbit hole with, with Velvet and her family, I checked out. I'm glad he's getting his comeuppance. Yeah, there's there's some real unfortunate things that have that happen on this internet, and I think sometimes things that happen on YouTube, it's almost like you saw a car accident happen right in front of you. You can't look away, but you need to look away because now the ambulance is coming to, you know, people got hurt and all those things. 
Um, girl, key plus three is a whole mess. She was trying. See, key, you know, that lady, you know, her her brother. Look. <laughs> you know, her brother is sitting in um Fresno County Jail. So there's a mommy, guys. Let me intersect the mommy community with the Nesto with Nesto-ish for a minute. There's a mommy out there. Her name is Key Plus Three. And um, it's there's some drug history going on. There's some poverty and homelessness and all of those things. There's some um, multiple baby daddies and all of the things. Uh, Key, is, Key is an interesting person. She's in, she's in the mommy community. She's not someone that I cover at all. Really. I did. I'll, I'll bubble up on my community page the day that we covered, uh, her brother actually, um, is accused of killing his stepfather or their stepfather. I'm not sure what happened. They said it was, is it a 5150? He's got some sort of psych. He was having like a psychological break and he went bananas and went to his mom's house. And somehow there was a situation with the stepfather. Stepfather was unalive, right? Um, key is, ma'am is, I don't know. Ma'am has lived in hotels. Ma'am, I think, ma'am has dealt with homelessness. There has been some uh, drug situations. It's a very... It's, it's, I don't cover that channel. I just, I like a good train wreck and everything, but this, this was in the pits. Okay. Um, and ma'am had this situation happen like two months ago. And let me tell you something. She record, she did a vlog where she basically was vlogging out in front of like the Fresno County jail the night that her brother was arrested for the unaliving. And it was the weirdest thing. And I had to cover it. Um, but I haven't been back since and I'm not going to, uh, because at the end of the day, there's some pain and suffering there. And I like a good laugh and I don't necessarily am trying to laugh on people's pain and suffering, um, to that extent. I mean, that's not any, there's not really anything funny going on over there. It's just very weird and strange and I'm just, I'm not into it. Um, but yeah, key plus three is very, I'm not surprised. Like that wouldn't surprise me. Um, because you know, my sentiments, if you watch any of my channels, you know, low self-esteem can take you to places that you've never thought you've been and low self-esteem. It's, you know, there's more going on between your ears, um, than anywhere else. And if you believe it, you might go to the depths of it. And unfortunately, some people who suffer from low self-esteem will find themselves in places um, and wake up and try to figure out what happened. And the, there's, and there's a lot of that on this internet, unfortunately. Right. Um, but yeah, key plus three is, is one of those. Okay. Um, but yeah, she's, she's out there vlogging the situation. She's monetizing it. She's turning it into coin. If that's what she wants to do for views, that's what she thinks is effective content for her channel. Let her do it. You know what I mean? Um, if she wanted to be recruited by that guy, um, she needs to thank her lucky stars. She didn't, it didn't happen because God only knows. Um, do you follow, uh, Irona Lopez? No. Um, let's see what's going. Let me, let me look it up. Um, A A R O N A Lopez. Let's see. Arona Lopez was born and raised in Chicago, began stand-up comedy. Um, what happened to her? Broadcast journalist, songwriter, podcaster. Is there some news? Is she a podcaster? Woman arrested for breaking quarantine and sent back to me. Oh, not her. Okay. Um... What do I need to know about her? Is she, is there something going on with her? Um, random. I just heard about 
this Bishop Lamar M. Whitehead guy, he got some Nesto ways, but I've heard there's stuff about Bishop uh, Whitehead. I guess maybe we need to do, uh, do some research. I guess we meeting me and find out some more about it. Thank you, Michelle. Nesto is such a liar and complains about not having anything. Now, all of a sudden he has property or does he want to use others for financial gain? I think, no, he doesn't have property. And yes, he is a liar. Um, let's get into, let's, you know, it's worth doing a call in or something about it. Maybe give me till Friday so I can read a few things. I've heard some things. I went to Facebook when something erupted, some lady went into the church. Like I kind of know enough to be dangerous, but I don't know enough. I don't know enough just to be honest. I don't want to, I don't want to tell that lie. Somebody dropped me a cash app. Let's see. Um, to the person who sent me one, J J H. Thank you. And J K. Thank you. Um, Oh, you so um, J.K. said today was a very entertaining chat and call in. Look, I think it's good for everyone to have different thoughts and opinions. I think that Joey brings a different perspective. I think you guys love Joey once upon a time. I'm sure Joey can get back in y'all's favor again. At the end of the day, I think it's really good for everybody to have, you know, that everyone has different thoughts and opinions and uh, we all made it here some way. You know what I'm saying? Um, I, I, you know what I mean? Like, I really like Fonny. something about her. I like her tenacity. I know how hard it is to be a woman and climb up the ladder and be, and, and work towards leadership. Um, I was not in leadership to the level of Fonny being, um, like a district attorney or, you know, myself attaining like a director level. I never made it to that level. Um, but working through the ranks, working hard, um, you know, all of the things, not being perfect, having a good time, enjoying your life, all of the things that ma'am had a, every right to do, I I can so identify with that. You know what I mean? Um I feel bad for her, um, you know, that she didn't have some people in her corner whispering in her ear, even Nate at a certain point, having enough discipline to say, you know what, we probably shouldn't be doing this. Um, just from a standpoint of the man in your life, you know, cause it didn't seem like this was just some random romps. This seemed like these two had some somewhat of a relationship that nobody on either side could look at each other in the eye and say, you know what, we might need to like, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, we're not going to get away with this. Like, and then also accepting the job, like, it's just, it was just kind of like, I feel bad for her kind of, I do. Um, so I do. That might be an unpopular opinion for some people. I know people feel like there's going to be someone in my comments. I know who's going to say Fanny's getting exactly what she deserves. And yeah. Okay. I'm not even going to debate that. I I'm sure she is wise enough to know every night when she goes home that she fucked up, period. I don't think we need to tell her like a million more times that she messed up, but I don't think that that makes her any less of, you know, oh, I, I can so identify with her journey as, as a woman. I really can. Thank you, 50 Creole, 50 Californian. Thank you so much, sis. I appreciate that. Thank you. You guys always spoil me and I appreciate like you have no idea how humbling it is um all that you guys do uh to support this channel so I just I love you guys so much members and mods day what <laughs> thank you to all the new members thank you to our gifting members thank you to Loretta thank you thank you to me thank you to our num our member uh Ms. the right one okay anyone else who became a member during this um, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We didn't have a whole lot of new members today um, that came on their own. Uh, the right one came and then we had 30 new members um, gifted. So that was awesome. Thank you again to Loretta. Thank you to um, High Vibes. Thank you so much. Um, his vacay in Cobb County and being disconnected from his life has taken its toll, but no 
uh, is it SAG? No SAG is the kill. Oh, but the no SAG is the killing part because that barbershop was a sex. Okay. So no Punani. He wasn't getting any Punani. And I think that that's what's killing him. So that's the killing part for him because he was, they were doing the most in the, um, in the barbershop. Yes, I agree with that. Um, Shirley won't do it, a snack and a meal, because she's too embarrassed. ATL should be called Tyler Perry Studios. Thank you, Danny. Thank you, boo-boo. Um, Sarah, this was an interesting comment. Um, pick me the movie. That is the Sonya movie. Um, have you been swallowed? Okay, Jay Breezy. Um, Loretta calling Joey out, period. And, you know, I think Joey comes with the male point of view. Um, it has been said, we think Joey is from the legal community, but sir won't confirm nor deny he is staying neutral and keeping his anonymity, right? Jalea says, I hope Shirley was getting tested regularly. Oh, this is our new friend who called in Jalea. Um, I hope Shirley was getting tested regularly due to nasty Nesto shenanigans. Um, Michelle. Nesto is such a liar. He complains about not having anything. Now, all of a sudden, he has property. He's such a liar, sis. I, I totally agree. Or does he want to use others for financial gain? I think he lays the bedding and lets other people fall in. Bougie gang, y'all clowning today. Absolutely. Random uh, thought about Lamar Whitehead. We do need to... We'll check into that. I don't know if the case is active. I'm assuming it is. But you guys... If any of you can send me what you have or anything that can help me out in some research, I'll I'll definitely get into it. I heard that he's like a church guy. Somebody confronted him in the church. There's some stuff going on, but I'm not quite sure. So anything that you guys have that can give me a maybe a synopsis or if there's court filings or anything, if you can let me know, or is it just like some church shenanigans, let me know and then we'll get into it. Um, otherwise let's see what else is going on here. Bank of America. I got my own problems and Fani will be all right. Absolutely. I'm not worried about her at all. Um, he is on trial. I think Pam is in New York. Really interesting. Okay. I haven't seen any reports from Pam though. Um, so yeah, definitely, you know, I'll be, I'll be tuning in. Okay. My comments are messing up. I'll be in the bushes. I see you sis. I see you Rhonda. Maybe you can't see it on yours, but we see you, boo-boo. We see you right here. Okay. Joey equals, you think that was Daryl? Ooh, Joey in the bushes. Joey, they're putting Daryl there that you might be Nesto's secret friend. What? You guys are a mess. Okay. Uh, Joey is skull. Joey got skull drugged all up and down these YouTube streets today. He did not have, yeah, he, he got the business today. You are absolutely right. Uh, they got pulled out the bushes today. We caught some strays. Okay. Um, today was a good day. You guys enjoyed today. I'm glad. I'm glad. I'm glad. I'm glad. You guys are awesome. Hey, 504. Um, well, today was all about you guys in the chat. So, um, you guys stayed strong for a long time up in here. Look, we'll finish up the reading of Diddy before the end of this week. You guys were totally not interested in Portia. Okay. But I had to get through it. Joey is team. Na I don't think he's team nasty Nesto. I think he's team. The law is supposed to run a certain way. I don't think it was as specific to Nesto as it is. He just wants to see the law fair, fairly administered. Um, but I appreciate you guys. You guys have, you guys call it how you see it. And really, Joey also has not Nesto bonded out. Girl, why is Nest, it, is Nesto out yet? Like all this big talking, all I'm going to say is not Nesto has been talking everyone's ear off for the past year and a half. Is he on the streets yet? And it's not so much. I want to see him on the streets, but damn it. Sir, you have been talking your ass off. Has he cashed out? That's what I want to know. And if he hasn't cashed out, then we're going to need for him to humble himself a little bit. 
Um, did he do a lot of mis mans mansplaining? It was, you know, he's a man. Sir is a man. He's got his men's he's got his men's point of view, but I think he also has a, a view from the vantage point of the law. Um he's in jail crying, period. I don't I don't think Nesto's not getting out. Sonya's been quiet because Sonya can't. It was fun for Sonya to talk all her shit when she was able to talk her shit, but now it's time to put up and Ma'am doesn't have five cents. I I I call bullshit on that. Ma'am doesn't have any money. And as I stated, where she could have been pandering a certain audience to get her money, her coins together to get him out, Sis was over here arguing in the comment section in the women's sector of people who don't give a fuck about net what Nesto's got going on. You know what I'm saying? Like really. That was so dumb, but it wasn't up for us to educate her on how to get these coins up. Cause I'm sure we've, we have all seen social media do its damn thing, right? We've all seen it. The fact that she <laughs> is too dumb, that's her problem. And I'm not going to give any clues now. I'm not giving a clue. So don't anybody even say anything. Because ma'am doesn't even know she she has no idea. So we're not gonna we're not giving any clues. I'm telling you, 2024, sis is I I've been on this internet for a long time giving all kinds of advice and clues and stuff like that. If you hadn't noticed, you know. Mm -mm. Where's her 17 properties? Absolutely. We need to, we don't look, bougie gang is not gonna be part of the story. How about that? Okay. Does that does that say enough? I don't I don't want to be part of the story. I don't want to make the story. I'm not trying to influence the story. Let these people figure it out. That's all I have to say. Let them figure it out. Be grown, be on your grown and figure it out. Okay? Last thing, one of our sisters, Cynthia said that there is some property in um Augusta. Here's some TT. Uh, Cynthia, if you have any of that information, can you please screenshot that? I don't know if you were here when I mentioned it last time, but can you screenshot that sis and, um, send it along so we can, um, get into it and figure out what's what, because we really don't know. Um, and if he has some property, we don't even know if it's his to leverage. Right. Um, Okay. You guys did amazing on the likes. Guys, we are going long here. Let's shut this one down. If you guys want to do another live stream later, because I don't, girl, cradle cap, can you please? 504 is so naughty. She's so naughty. She's naughty, okay? Naughty, not nice, okay? She said, oh, cradle cap, okay? Cradle cap is AKA I'm just assuming Sonia because Sonia has that very, um, sussy hairline and yeah. Okay. Cynthia, send a link. Oh, send a link for you want to call in or you send a link as in my email address. Send. Oh, you sent the link. Hold on. Let me see. Is it something that I can show right now? Um, no, that's not. Did you send me, you, did you send me something, sis? Did you send it to Real Talk Bougie or you sent it to Love Lies and Lace Fronts? Um, sent the link. Okay, let me check. Did you send it to Info at Real Talk? Let me check my iCloud. Guys, okay, so for two weeks, I was suffering in silence. I, I think I told you guys um, that I found it. I think I, I told you guys that Farah and I got, I ordered new phones for everybody on um, Valentine's Day. And um, girl, we finally got the phones in. It took two weeks. They ordered me the wrong thing. Shouts out to the girl who 
um, my, my salesperson, she was very sweet. It wasn't her fault, but she didn't ask me and I need a terabyte phone. Um, you guys I'm sure can guess why. Um, so Richmond County, Georgia, I'm looking at, but I can't see, I guess I'm going to have to look it up. So map, what's the search that I need to do? Cynthia, can you call in? Can you call me, um, online? Can you just go ahead and call on StreamYard? Um, because I got the website, but it won't pull up the search that you engaged. Oh, let me do Ernest. Okay, let me do Williams. E-A-R-N-E-S-T, even though that's not how you spell his name, Ernest Williams. Um... Okay. Are you talking about property on Hope Road, Lucky Street, Pepper Ridge Drive, and English Road? Okay. All right, let me forward this to myself. Okay. The those of you guys who are still here, you guys are like committed AF. Thank you so much. You guys are awesome. You guys are pretty awesome. Okay, let's see. Or maybe just still at work and you're like, you know what? Look, I I don't want to listen to the radio. I don't need to listen to like TikTok music all day. Um, okay. Okay, where is it? Um, is this Cynthia calling? Hello? Hello? Is this Carla? Is this Carla? Carla, can you hear me? Carla. Okay, Carla, I'm going to drop you down. I'll come back to you in like two minutes. Okay. Um, I don't know what's going on, but that's okay. I have, I have theories of spending too much time on live streams. Sometimes weird stuff starts to happen. So we'll just, we'll just, we'll. Carla, are you there? Carla's got me on mute. Carla. Hello, friend. Hi, Carla. Hi, sorry about that. I'm new to um, worried StreamYard, you know sorry. Oh, you're fine. I was a little worried because sometimes weird stuff happens on the internet, but it's okay. Yeah, and most of the time, friend, I find out that it's me. It's the user, oh not the... <laughs> you know what? Me too. Me mm -hmm. too. Me too. What's going on, Carla? I just wanted I didn't. I just wanted to tell you that I'm, I'm 60 years old, and I just wanted to tell you that I never really... I do social media, but not really YouTube that much. And then uh -huh. one time, I just happened to be in YouTube... And then I, I clicked on you. I think it was your face or something. You know how something to draw you in. And I clicked and on it, happened? and I fell in love with your voice. Oh. And that's when I went. And then I saw the uh, Ernesto thingy that's going on, and now I'm hooked. So good. Yeah. So it, has it given you? It's like a new guilty pleasure. It's gotten you into doing some things you hadn't done before. Oh my gosh, you know, I'm I'm in California and I wake up at, at about 6 30 in the morning and I have you on note instantly I, I it's like my alarm. Oh. <laughs> Inst instantly I go. Or sometimes I'm even nodding off, but that wakes that makes me get up when I see that you're 
you know, you post it. It's you helping post you it. develop some new interests and meet yeah. some friends in the chat and yeah, just exactly. find some different things to watch and listen to. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. And that's another thing. I'm sorry, Fran. That's another thing I like about you. You, you have so much sense. And in a way I, I think about myself and went, gosh, in so many ways I'm challenged, right? Sometimes I don't get, if something is really silly, or maybe I don't understand where someone's coming from. I go, wait a minute, I'm not grasping it. But with you, I always grasp it. So it's kind of like, you know how my brain works, even though oh. you don't know. <laughs> so that's all so, I want. So uh, sometimes we're taking things that are a little bit more complicated and we're kind of girlfriend chatting it out. Yes, yes. Yeah, yeah, that's how I like it too. So we can all kind of, because there's nothing that, we can't talk about it's just sometimes some things aren't interesting because they make it it's made to sound boring mm -hmm. or it's just kind of like oh, i'm not really interested in that topic or i'm mm -hmm. not really you know that's them over there mm -hmm. but you know there is juicy stuff happening all around us it's just finding the aspect of it that's interesting to us yes so true yeah so true yeah, yeah. And you hit There's it. so much. You hit those I'm words. so not interested. I, I mean, no offense to anybody. I'm not super interested in election interference. Mm -hmm. However, I love the drama around it. I'm not interested in the politics around it. Mm -hmm. I'm interested in the drama of it. Some people would be quite offended by that. I'm not interested in the politics of it, mm -hmm. but I'm not. And I think but that that's not. okay. Mm -hmm. It's it's America. We get to say what we want. Mm -hmm. I like the drama in the tea. Like the drama. Yes. Yeah. I want the tea. This part with Fani and Nate is very interesting to me, but I think even though it is drama, mm -hmm. it's very topical because a lot of us have bosses. A lot of us have had situations happen. Mm -hmm. People, some of you have businesses and you bid for government contracts. Mm -hmm. This is some behind the scenes stuff of what's been going on. This is very interesting. It really is. It's, and for me, like I said, for me, I'm, I don't know, I want to say I'm weird, but I'm not. For me, it does take a lot. Even with the movie, if you don't catch me in the in the first five minutes of the show or the movie, I'm out. So, I like that. You know, it's so it, that this was so interesting. It it grabbed me like right away. And it is the drama, because I can Good. watch war movies, but I don't really like war movies too much. But if there's drama involved, then I do. I like it. So, yeah. yeah, I don't like war movies at all. That's mm -hmm. that's so no interest. I like I like uh I don't even know what I like. I I don't have a particular genre. I guess romantic comedy stuff like that yes. um is my thing. Um but yeah, so what else what are you thinking about what's going on with Nesto? Do you think Nesto is cashing out at this moment or is it is it um oh well, no cash. I guess I'm going to all that talking and all that preparing that he did um, he's just still sitting right where he's at. Exactly. And and there's another thing. I'm glad you mentioned that because the property thing that he's saying he leave, he's leaving a trust to the, the kid, the kids, or mm -hmm. the grandkids or whatever. Mm -hmm. I'm thinking, okay, I'm not sure when that phone call was, but here we are now. So if he has access to that, why wouldn't he have already obtained it? Why wouldn't he have already used it? Right. So does, does he really have that or not? What well, do you think? Let's just say with the other bonds, he really didn't need to cash it out at that moment. He needed to wait till he got everything so he could just put apply those monies across the board, I would think. Oh, you know I what I mean? See. Because I without see. having yeah. if you have 10 cases and you have bond on nine cases, you you could put up money, but you're still not going anywhere. So oh, the bonding yeah, agent true. isn't gonna do anything until you have clear you know, you have a clear bond across the board on everything. Oh, now is, so is put up or shut up time. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Now is put up or shut up, but it's put you know, up or shut up. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But he reminds I, me so much of, Oh gosh, I get shivery. I think about, I know men like him. It's a shame to say, and I was going to say one experience for me, mm -hmm. which resulted in a marriage and two children. But wow. you know, sometimes you stay in something and you can't explain the reason why. You know everything. You go, what am I doing here? What am I still doing here? It's kind of like that weird kind of sick thing. But then finally I got out. But now I can only say this, Fran. 
from my experience with this particular man, I can detect everything about a man now. There's nothing you can't get past me. Okay, so your eyes are wide open. Yes, eyes wide open. And mm -hmm. when I, oh gosh, ooh, when I even hear even certain mannerisms of his, I don't know if it's trauma. I'm laughing, friend, by the way. <laughs> I don't know if it's trauma or what, but he he is just no good. He's just no good. Mm. Yeah, he's, I'm like, what are you he's saying? Creepy. He's, he's very much giving creepy. Yes. Um, so I... Uh, uh, I, you know, there's, I mean, look, we've, we have got Nesto, the unfortunate thing for, for Nesto and even Sonia is that we do have him somewhat figured out. Um, I know we don't know everything about this man, but I mm -hmm. think that, you know, the word on the street is he's just not, he's not a good guy and where there's no. smoke, there's fire yes. and we know this, but yes. it's, he does, he deserves his day in court and he's going to get it yeah. at the end of the day. Where he did his dirt is where he's sitting right now, mm -hmm. and he has no one to blame but himself. Like exactly. that's that's kind of it, and that's all. I don't I don't have any sugar coat for him. Mm -hmm. I don't feel bad for him. Mm -hmm. I don't feel bad that Fulton County is in a state of disarray right now. He should have mm -hmm. stayed out the jail. You should have yeah. stayed out. Yeah, and you shouldn't have had Natalie Fields. I bet you what I know for sure. You know, people say, oh, well, you never know. That could be you. That could be this. That could... Mm. I know what I know for sure is that there is no detective with my name on their mm -hmm. lips. Exactly. OK. Exactly. And I, what I also know for sure is I'm not checking systems to see if I have warrants. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm not checking, you know what I mean? Any of that stuff that he was doing. Lester yes. was living a certain type of a lifestyle mm -hmm. where he was he had a guilty conscience and he was worried clearly about some things yes and oh like why were you worried why were you checking for warrants every day if you weren't mm -hmm. doing something you know what yeah, i mean who does so mm -hmm. who does the people who feel like people mm -hmm. are coming for them mm -hmm. everyone else is just out here living their life exactly. you get a ticket you pay your ticket um i used what easy pass the other day okay. i got my invoice in the mail because we don't if you don't have the card they'll send you the invoice from your license tag I don't, I don't need to be told. I don't need to get a 60 day notice. I got my notice. I need to pay it. I'm sending them their money. You right. know what I'm saying? Yes. Why would I, why would I, I don't have to be handheld mm -hmm. to not have something. Cause eventually you'll, you don't pay something like that. They're going to do something with your tag. Exactly. Like, yeah. I don't need anybody to tell me that. Mm -hmm. I don't even need to research it. Like mm -hmm. at the end of the day, Nesto just seems to be the type of person who wants to live as on the verge of something happening mm -hmm. as possible mm -hmm. and then want to be mad because someone's looking for you. Stay out yes. people's way. Yes. Leave people yes. alone. Go make yes. your own money. Be a man. Yep. Get better. I mean, get be yeah. Yeah. I know they ridiculous. his younger days a lot, but how long are we going to ride? How long is he going to ride on that? You're how old is he like 59 or something like that? Too old. It's, it's like, come on. What have you, you're a grandfather. Your yeah. So. This is this is the question I would have for him. Nesto, if your granddaughter, who's over there at wherever she is, whatever the university he always wants to talk about that she goes to, mm -hmm. if she met you at the appropriate age, whatever that might be, let's say she's 20 or 21, let's say she met 21-year-old you, are you okay with her dating a guy like you? Exactly. Men That's should want one. to be the type of man okay. to put in front of their own daughter or their own granddaughter. Mm -hmm. If you know that you are a fucking bum, mm -hmm. if you put your granddaughter on a pedestal, you see that she's a beautiful young lady. She's off to college. She's doing all of these things. Would you put someone like you in front of her? Mm. And if the answer is no, then, I mean, you're not living right. Exactly. Exactly. So anyway, um, anything else, Carla? I'm so, first of all, thank you. I'm glad that you found us and uh -huh. um, welcome because this collective wouldn't be the collective that it is if it wasn't for everyone finding this at one point or another. Because once upon a time, there was like 25 of us here. 
Okay. Oh, really? And everybody came over from my my other channel from okay. Love Lies and Lace Fronts. Oh yeah, no. Where we do reactions, reviews, moments. and commentary. Um, everybody came over one day. I was like, guys, we're gonna talk about Alex Murdoch. Guys, come on, let's go. <laughs> and all those who were able or wanted to came, and um, and we built up from here. And there, and then here you are. And I yeah, thank everybody you. came one by one, <laughs> one by one, clicked in, and. Uh -huh. Then that's it, and that's all. So everyone's welcome. I love all you guys. You guys are so much fun. I love mm -hmm. to have a kiki. You guys know that. I love to laugh. Um, do we sometimes have a little fun at some people's misfortune? Yeah, we do. Yeah. Um, there's this one guy who I follow. It's called, Un guys, don't laugh, but it's called Uncivil Law. Oh. He is a lawyer, and he goes over like how court cases kind of went bad. Oh, um, okay. Yeah, he's on YouTube, Uncivil Law. And I'm gonna follow him. I'm gonna check him. One out. of his um what when he's kind of talking about his channel um at the beginning of his his podcast or whatever, he he basically is like, you know, we're here kind of like talking about other people's misfortunes, but you know, it's 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 interesting. So um and I like law programs. So but mm -hmm. yeah. He's he's funny and he he did a whole thing. Um, I'll share an episode. Okay. He basically talked about so a couple of weeks ago when Alex Murdoch was on the verge of getting a new trial mm -hmm. and Dick Harputlian, his lawyer, who is a a weirdo, mm -hmm. um, messed it up for him. Basically, he blew the case wow. and um of getting him the new trial. Uh, he basically kind of went point by point, but it was so funny. And uh, and then he explains the law in a way that you that you can get it, you know, oh, as not being a lawyer. You know, he's he's having conversation with us about what's going on, and he's so funny. Yeah, if, if legal commentary, of course, I love Pam the Law Intellect. Oh, um, yeah, but Emily Z Baker you. is so yeah. good, and I do like this guy Uncivil Law. And Vicky is co-signing; she likes him too. Okay. Um, there's another lady. She's a little dry, but she's very on point. Her name is Lee. She's the Harvard lawyer. I think that's the name of her, like the Harvard lawyer. Her name is Lee. Um, okay. she's really good too. Okay. But like the um, what's his name? Uh, the guy that the uh, I don't like him much mm -hmm. at all. The black guy. I hate to say it like that, but I don't like him. The lead attorney. Yeah, he's. Ever since the thing with Shanquilla Robinson, I found him to be. I didn't. I'm just. I'm gonna keep my comment to myself. Like my true. I don't like his channel. I'm gonna say it like that. I don't. Yeah. I wonder if I've checked. Him I don't out like. Before. Don't. Okay. Yeah. I mean, do what you want. Lead attorney mm -hmm. is not. Um. He's not. He's. I don't recommend it. That's okay. Like that. Okay. I don't recommend. He can be distasteful. Thank you, five hundred four. Distasteful. Okay. Yes. Distasteful. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Okay. And he's not. I don't think he's on the side of women. I think he likes women for obvious for boobies and yes. vagina. Yeah. He doesn't like us yeah. like that. He doesn't, he doesn't appreciate yeah. us as equals. Can I mm -hmm. say it like that? Mm -hmm. I know exactly. Um, what I've you're heard of about. Natalie the lawyer chick. Yeah, I think he just likes women because yeah, misogynistic is that one? Look, let me stop. Okay. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> let me be quiet. He likes women for women's usefulness. Yeah, okay? for whatever they think. He's that he right. might be one of those you can go yeah. make him a sandwich types. Okay. Mm -hmm. What is that? The kitchen and the bedroom? The kitchen. Okay, and the, the kitchen. He's a kitchen and the bedroom type yeah. guy. He does not appreciate a woman for her smarts and oh. all of the things. He talks about Fani real bad. I don't like oh. him. I just don't. Mm -mm. Really? Okay. I don't like him. Yeah. I'm glad you told me that. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. Yeah. No more of that. <laughs> we don't need any more of that. Yeah. He's a mess. Mm -mm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. He's okay, not. There's, there's better things to watch. Okay. And what, I'm sorry, what are those two again? Uncivil. Uncivil Pam. law. Uncivil. There's Pam, the law intellect. Mm -hmm. There is Natalie, Pam. uh, the lawyer chick. Yes, 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 okay. yes. Okay. Um, there is Lee, the Harvard lawyer, Harvard lawyer, Lee, Lee, Harvard. that's a lady. Okay. There's uncivil law. I mean, you should subscribe to law and crime if you're not, I mean, I like law and crime, um, I know some people don't like them, but I like them just fine. I like court TV. Okay. 
court I like TV. all of that. I heard, that. I heard of those too. Okay, yeah. cool. Yeah, I need I something new. I need more. I need more. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, there's there's some good stuff. So if you want to get caught up on all of like the major cases right now, if you subscribe to all those channels, you will be you will be all up to date. You will be oh, up to date on everything. Okay, good. Because yes. Netflix ain't doing it no more. <laughs> Netflix is, you know, it's situational. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And it's Very like much. they'll have something good. It's not consistent. Yeah. Yeah, but you know, really there's good, but and then you have to also know what to look up to watch. You know what I mean? There might be something going on, but you have to kind of be in the know. Oh, to like, oh okay, see. okay, I heard about that. Let me go find that. Let me go find this or whatever. Okay. Yeah. So which okay, cool. Okay, okay Carla. Well, welcome to the family. We love you. you. And um, I'm glad you're here. Thank you so much for supporting. Okay. Have a good dinner with your uh your your husband and your daughter. Thank you. I'm okay. sure I, you know, it's that time of day where I'm like, what am I yeah. cooking tonight? Yeah. <laughs> Girl, you say. I'm already, I'm, oh my God. That Mommy is my food. main dilemma every day. What am I cooking for dinner tonight? Uh, every so. days. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, I'm going to let you go, Carla. Thank you so much, hon. Okay, kiddo. Thank you. Goodbye. Thank you. Take care. All right. Bye-bye. Okay. TD says she unsubscribed from Netflix. What? Okay, so this is what I found. I don't have it up on the screen because for some reason I couldn't get the email. Um, I got the email in my phone, but I, I tried to forward it. I tried to send myself the link, and for some reason... Oh, here it is. Duh, guys. Let me tell you, some, sometimes I do silly things, and I wouldn't even... I can't even tell y'all what I just did. Okay. Um... Richmond County, Georgia. Copy. Hold on one second. Let me bring it over to. Okay. Guys, this will be the last thing because we've been online for a long time. I know somebody out there is like, and she's been live for four. Somebody came to my comments this week talking about how I do long lives on Nesto and I should be embarrassed. I'm like, look, if law and crime is not embarrassed being live about uh, Alec Baldwin or uh, can you, can I mind my own business and you mind yours? Like, I don't know. Some people, I don't know why they're so mad that I'm live. I mean, you can be live too. You know what I'm saying? Like why be mad? Cause I'm live and why be clock? You know, it's, it's down to some pocket watching pocket watching has it become somewhat of a pandemic on this internet. It's awful. Okay. Let's see. All right, I'm done. Rant over. Okay. All right, let's see. Oh, Ernest Williams. Ernest Williams and Willie May. Ooh. And Willie May Williams. Is that some family land on Pepperidge and English something? Now there is. Now who? Aunt. Mama May, Mama somebody, Ernest Williams. That that property is worth ninety six thousand uh, dollars. They sold that in nineteen ninety nine. Uh, I wish they had pictures. Sale date. This is a uh, property and appraisals. Uh, okay, so this was purchased in 1999. Um, but we don't know what Ernest Williams. Ernest Williams is such a popular name. Hold on. Guys, this is speculation. We don't know. Um, there's a property that was purchased in 1999. So it's 24 years. The building appraisal is now at $204,000. It looks like there's a prop a house that sits assessment notice. There are some taxes due $865. I don't know if the taxes have been paid year 2021. 
2023. Are the taxes past due? Now that would be interesting. If the taxes are past due, taxes are now totaling 100% appraised value, $226, county operations tax, final notice, 23rd solid waste collection, non-residential. Hmm. Uh, they owe $1,200 in taxes. Um, if the taxes are past due, that might make me think that maybe taxes are past due from the previous year. And these could be the years that he's been in jail if this is his property. It appears that there's a property with an Ernest Williams and a Willie Mae Williams. I don't know who Willie Mae is. Uh, there's no property photo. Uh, I wish they had a photo of the property. Um, all right, that's one. Then there's something on English Road. And this is with Freddie Lee, Willie Floyd, Gloria and Lovey May, Lovey May Jenkins, Gloria. And this is some family interest. This is some land in, with a family interest. And it's like a 16%, uh, almost a 17% stake. Is not worth much. Uh, the other property was worth over two hundred thousand dollars. This is this sounds like it might just be some land. There's a house that sits on it that's worth about eighty one thousand dollars. The total appraised is right up under a hundred. It's not enough. Um, hold on a second. Pepperidge. This is what's going on on uh, 225 Pepperidge. And this is what's going on. Uh, Jesus. And this is what's going on on this other piece of land, girl. Somebody walking out to the mailbox. Girl, that's, that's a country road for you. Okay. That's out in the country, okay? I don't know. We don't know if that's it or not, just to be honest. We, do, we don't know, okay? Okay. I don't think so, unless it was behind that house and it's not developed. Uh, did you guys see it or do I need to reshow it? Thank you so much, sis. Thank you. Oh, you're so sweet. Thank you. They are so bad. When I say bad, I mean bad. Okay. Lambo is bad, uh, but he's so cute though. Okay. Um, wanted to give you, oh, you're so sweet. Thank you. Every time you say Nesto, here go the dog. Girl, is that, can you believe it? You know what? He might think I'm saying Lambo. When I say Nesto, he's thinking I'm saying Lambo. 
2.5 acres. Let me tell you what I would do with two and a half acres. Oh my God. We would have party house central. My husband would have a nice four, five, six car garage, like big, like a shop. Cause he would like that. I would have a pool and a lady cave, my own little lady cave house studio, bougie gang central. Okay. And we would have uh, a trail. Miss SS, you're welcome. Love, Bougie Gang. Oh, thank you, lady. No, we've been online for so long. I don't even know what to do with myself. Okay, so a couple things. My phone saga is over. Phones are in. I didn't even want to talk about it because I was so mad. Um, Joey is not, he's not about that life. I think Joey, you know, this was just a bad Joey call in day. I think Joe, I, I can hear, you know, I'm good at being like interpreter. I don't think he means it that way, but I think, you know, I think, uh, he's just, he's just expressing how he feels. He feels like it just doesn't Fulton County has its issues. And I mean, we saw that. That's crazy. Like with the system down, we even saw like last week. I mean, the system is, I don't want to say it's broken, but it seems like it's next to broken. I cannot imagine if something happens to you in Fulton County that it could potentially take a week for you to st to get out. That's awful. People in Fulton County need to be on notice. Fuck around and find out. Like that's that's what Fulton County is on to me at this moment. If you live in that area, you better not play around with those people at all. You better not play around with those people at all. Because you go up in there, you are going to be sitting and it's going to be a problem. Um. I was about to say, are you telling people to unsubscribe from my channel? <laughs> oh, to reset their notifications? Okay. Don't unsubscribe from me. <laughs> Thank you, sis. I appreciate you. Yes. If you hit unsubscribe, then you uh, clear all your notifications, and then you make sure to set it to all so you could always be notified every time I go live, post a video, and do all of the things. Um, okay, guys, I'm going to let y'all go. In a way, I really don't want to get off either because I love talking to you guys. Um, but I'll come back. If you guys want to talk about something else or you want to wa watch Terrence Bradley or something, let's make it make sense because I don't like to just be on for no good reason. But if you guys want to watch something, we can talk about something. Um, I found the property. It's 94 acres, not Nesto's. It's only worth $184,000. Nesto's 25 ain't worth nothing. I found a property. It's 94 acres, not Nesto's. It's only worth... Uh, yeah, undeveloped land, not in prime real estate, isn't going to yield you much money. That's why it's like, it is not a bad idea to buy land because it can be a great investment. Who is calling here? Hold on a second, guys. Okay. All right, guys, let me, um, I, I might have some exciting news for you guys on Friday. It's like exciting mom news, but I want to share it with you guys because, um, I know you guys can appreciate it, but Farah is working on something really big and I'm so excited for her. So hopefully I'll have some good news for you guys. Maybe I'll know Friday or we'll know definitely by sometime next week, but I'm happy for her. She's trying something new. So just send your positive support her way that things go in her direction. But she's working very hard and she certainly deserves it. So we'll just keep her in your positive thoughts, uh, my 12-year-old, please. And um, just some just just some support through the through the airwaves and that um sis that everything goes little sis's way. So um, but yeah. I'll tell you guys about it once I learn, you know, 
I I think it's going to be just fine. So I'm I'm trying to not be like a over overly overly mom. So yeah, we're claiming it though. So she's very excited. So anyway, let me let y'all go so I can go handle some business. Um, and then because I need to go pick her up. Um in the next hour or so. So yeah, thank you guys. You guys are so awesome. Today was fun. It was extra long, but it was members and mods and we had a lot to talk about. So I'm going to let you guys go have a wonderful evening. If there's something else to talk about, um, then I'll come back. Otherwise I'll see you guys tomorrow. I might be live over on love lies and lace fronts. I did not go live this morning. Um, forget, uh, Farrah forgot her computer this morning and I went, dropped her off at school. We literally got to the front door and she forgot her computer. So I had to come home, got her computer, went back to school, dropped it off in the office. One of the um, administrators who used to be her math teacher last year was talking to me and um, they're going on a school trip in a couple of months. And I registered to be a, you know, like a parent volunteer or whatever, chaperone. So, um, I just got my clearance back cause you have to be background checked and everything by the city. And of course I passed my background. <laughs> so, um, they were talking to me about potentially chaperoning and all of those things. And, um, then I went to the grocery store, ran an errand. By the time I got home, I was like, I was over it. Okay. So I got home like I don't know. It was like 10 o'clock and then I was getting ready to go live. I was doing some research and then um, my husband called and I ended up talking to him for 45 minutes and then I went live and I've been on the phone with you guys ever been on the phone. I've been live with you guys ever since. So that was, that was my day so far. If you made it to this point in the live, you cannot be annoyed that I'm talking about personal stuff at this moment. Um, because that's just what it is when you get to into the well into the third hour. Um, I always go on my little brother's field trips. Yeah, 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 yeah. She wants me to go. So um, so I'm excited about that. I'll tell you guys all about it. I've never been to this place either that they're going. So I really do kind of want to go. I think it's going to be fun. So I'll tell you guys. Of course, you know I can't tell you guys about it now, but you know I will tell you guys all about it afterwards. Um, so I'm excited about it. Um Okay, I'm going to let y'all go. You guys have a wonderful evening. Let me know if I need to come back. You guys know how to reach me, Instagram, email, all of the things. So I'm never too far away. Uh, Patreon, you guys can reach out to me at any time. My dad was the field trip parent. Yeah, I my mom was a field trip parent too. So I really um, would love to be there to support the kids and, you know, I feel like I'm kind of a cool parent. I, I wouldn't let the kids do anything that they're not supposed to be doing. But in terms of like having a laugh and, and being current and up on what's going on out here, you know, I, I'm, I'm that mom. I am. Okay. Oh, you love it. Thank you, Michelle. Thank you. Okay, guys, take care. I will see you guys later. Have a good afternoon.